I met Warren. We were both 20 years old. And I still remember like the first year we had an apartment together. I asked Warren. Like I'm six like, months in. Yeah. I asked Warren. I'm like, uh, uh, two girls I'm friends with want to come over and like uh, have a barbecue. Um, you know, do you want to join? He's like, I'm very uncomfortable with girls coming into the apartment. <laughs> All right, everybody, welcome to episode number 19 of Mislabeled. Uh, obviously, last week, um, had Michael Gruen on. I uh, was very happy about that. Um, you know, first guest that I really wanted on that I thought was, you know, more than uh, just the average guest. But this week, we're following it up with a monster, monster <laughs> guest. Um, the only man more successful than Michael Gruen. First of <laughs> the all, only man more interesting than Michael Gruen. I just want to say one thing. First of all, can you, you're going to need to speak into the mic. Right now you're like chilling like. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I'm um, being too lazy. I was fair. And by the way, you could move your seat up as well if you want to like. <laughs> I'm not saying. <laughs> not label. This is a full on studio. We have chairs that move up and down. Oh, I thought he was making a short joke. I was like, right, we're a I minute said, in. We're I, a minute no, in. No, I wasn't making a short joke. I just see your face as four feet below the mic. <laughs> so I'm like, this is a big power move. <laughs> yeah, what's up, guys? So, all right. You guys, you guys have any, uh, you guys put money on I mentioned it's little people. You guys, all right. You guys so, in crypto? Anyways, first of all, uh, Shimali, how you doing? I just took a two hour nap. I'm good. All right, I'm Gucci. I'm good. <laughs> he took a two hour nap. Um, good for you, Shmelly. Um, All right, so we have uh, Zach Adler. Um, can we give uh, a little background on Zach Adler, Shmelly? How do you know him? Does that mean are we, this, so we can go this deep? I've known Zach since I was two years old. We shat in each other's diapers. Um, factual. <laughs> factual. I used one time one of his pull ups, shat in it, gave it back to him, told him. <laughs> We've given each other pink eye like a hundred times. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Since we were kids, we were rubbing each other's buttholes on each other's faces. By like, the way, very close I just want to establish one thing, um, and that is, <clears throat> if you're a parent or above the age of like, I don't know, if, if you if you're concerned that maybe you should be listening to this podcast, then you should turn it off right now. <laughs> yeah, this is this this is gonna, yeah. That's a very important uh, disclaimer for this podcast. Honestly, um, Zach's from Cleveland. I'm from Cleveland. We grew up five blocks away from each other. Um, our, you know, moms are best friends because <laughs> they're just, they're both, they're both, they're both Midwestern they're moms. Both Midwestern moms. <laughs> both helicopter moms. Yep. <laughs> um, oh yeah. So I've known Zach since I was two years old. Just talking about Midwestern moms. I, I used to love, Zach was a, was a gamer back in the day. He had GameCube, PlayStation. I didn't have any of this stuff. So whenever I, he also had the best snacks. Like when you're trading snacks in schools. So like I underratedly I had crap stacks. Like my mom like bought me like hummus veggie sticks. And like Zach sitting there with cakesters and like always trying to fucking trade with them. Anyways, besides that, I always wanted to play GameCube with Zach, Frisbee. Like he had fun. He had a dog that was super chill, and I used to hate dogs. The only dog I liked was his dog, name? Buster. Bro, I remember Buster's name, dude. But his mother was such a helicopter mom. <laughs> First of all, that, you, what's a helicopter? A, hel- a helicopter mom is a mom that basically just is micromanaging of like their kid. They care so much about their kid that they can't allow their kid to get out of their sight in, in any way. So you're like a helicopter, you're like a news helicopter. You're just like yeah, yeah, yeah. O- oversight consistently. Right, right. Uh, I have, there's an alternative definition. I'm a Jew. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So she would, be, I would basically be like, can I come over? And she'd be like, Zach has to go to DSW to get shoes. <laughs> and be like, Zach, do you have to go to DSW? He's like, no, my shoes are fine. My mom wants me to get shoes. So he's not free from 3.15 to 4.30. But from 4.30 to 5.15, you play GameCube with him. But from 5.15 to 5.30, he has to lick Buster's ass. And from 5.30 to 6.15, he has to make a filter fish with me. Now from 6.15 to 7.30, you can play with him. But only if you come over and you guys sit inside the living room. God, my, mom, my mom is the queen of like, just the way she's like a yucky. She, she, she grew up not from, she didn't know what a yucky was, but she's a yucky. Like, She's the queen of if there's something that I have to do that day or she has to do the other day, the whole day. Like, if we had a flight at 7.30 p.m., I'm like, oh, I'm going to go to a friend's house at, like, 11 a.m. She's like, we have a flight tonight. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I know. She's like, are you packed? You need a pack? I'm like, yeah, I'm packed. She's, she can't. There's one thing a day per day. That's it. Got it. Amazing. Yeah, one thing. Um, but yeah, that's background. Like me and Zach, we went to Yeshiva together. We went to Wits. We went to Wits together. We went to elementary school together. You know each other zero too. That's the that's yeah, that's the truth. And then I guess when we came to New York, we had separate paths, but even so, you were in Chavez Chaim for the first little bit, 
Great times. Sex, great times. He loves memory. By the way, that's his favorite time of New York. Look at his, his face. His RSA days. Hold on one second. Look at his face. Uh, Basically, let's get your thoughts right now. No, no, not yet. Just to bring this out a little bit stronger. Where, where are you living right now? I'm living in Crown Heights, bro. Got it. So yeah. he was in, how long ago? Nah, how long ago were you Where's in? the camera? Nah, Chabad. <laughs> how long? <laughs> <laughs> Do you have something against Chabad? Absolutely not. It's okay. just very important that I make that distinction. Why, why is that important? That I'm make? a proud snag. And for those who know what that is, they no, we don't know no what a snag is. Really? Bro, we live in North Woodmere. Right, right. Not right. Wow, you guys are like the real whites. Okay. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> right, I went to South Carolina. I'm like, this is home. I didn't know what this was until I moved to Crown Heights. Snag is a derog- usually derogatory uh, abbreviation of misnagid, which is the people who are against Chabad, which they just throw around as like anyone who's lit fish who's not Chabad is a, is a misnagid. But historically speaking, misnagid were the guys who were like, Crusading against Chabad, like wanting to put them in Kherm or stuff like that. But okay. now they just call like anyone who's not Chabad if they like don't like him, they're like, snack. Got it. Oh, you know what's the so snack's favorite holiday in the Jewish them. calendar? Tisha They love being sad. You know, you don't live Fox. Right, right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Got it. Yeah. Um, so now you're one second. So you're living in Crown Heights. Yeah. And how long how long ago were you in Khavzan Queens? Um, I'm I left when I was twenty. Chavetz Chaim Queen, specifically RSA. Oh, no, after the system. Leave the system. system. This is, is, here's the big question. Is ZA account as the system? I, I hear you, yes. If ZA counts as the system, then I was 24 when I left ZA. Okay, and now you are 28. 28. So and you're in Crown Heights. I'm like fresh out of Yeshiva. I think that gives a good idea. Surprisingly. I think that gives a good idea of your last, uh, the last four, four years. Five, yeah, like four, you, you were in the Yeshiva system, and now you're just like chilling out in Crown Heights. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I... I was kind of chilling hard for like, like when I was in ZA, like I wasn't really doing much at Shiva. Right. I mean, you, you know, oh, I'm sure we have mutual friends who were like in ZA and we're not exactly like hitting the books. Uh, were you remember in, my, in like a place called Mayana Torah? Yeah, no, that was like less Shiva I like was in and was taken. I, I took Mayana pretty seriously. Oh, you did? Yeah. You Shout out to Rabbi Friedman. You went out to ZA afterwards? ZA for me was like, I was there for two months. It was not a long period. I was there for two months and it was... I already like once I left Mayan and I left Mayan on good terms. I loved Mayan. I actually was like the probably the most positive yeshiva experience I ever had. But yeshiva imploded. It went from like thirty five guys in the dorm to like six guys, and they were all like mouth breathers. So I had to get out. <laughs> <laughs> what were they? <laughs> mouth breathers, like you. Just nerd, like real, you know. No. And like I just had to get I, out. I realized those nerds, were nerds. compliments. Couple of time is kind of has famous for a bit of a ratio of like whatever. So I, I had to mouth get out. <laughs> mouth I had to get out and I went to ZA as like a last ditch. I was like, I really want to leave Yeshiva, but obviously there were so many complexes going on. I was like, oh, well, you're a failure the second you leave Yeshiva. Right. So let's do a last ditch effort. ZA is the place. I had a friend, Kobe Lax, who was there. I was like, this is going to be great. And then I smoked weed for two months and learned nothing, but I made some really good friends. And I actually do have a little bit of a cashier with, um, I forget his name now. <laughs> <laughs> that is a strong, strong catcher. catcher. Wow. Uh, I had a catcher. Who's the Russian Shiva? What's it? The famous guy. Shai Kong. Shai Kong. Yeah. You have a little bit of a catcher. A catch catch tiny catcher with him, but wow. honestly, I respect him a lot. I saw how he runs that place. I saw how he runs his personal life and how he interacts with guys. The wonderful human being. Not saying I agree with him everything on politics or Judaism. I'm just right. talking about like the guy's the bench. Best. Yeah. He tries very hard, and yeah, it was it was good, positive two months. But after ZA, I was like, okay, that that was a nice <laughs> hail mary, and we're done. We're done. With ZA. <laughs> hail mary. <laughs> Zach has a tattoo of my cone on his left ass cheek. <laughs> Just to remember, every that's amazing. Time. That's amazing. Yeah, I feel like yeshiva nowadays has changed a lot. Like you could go to yeshiva and literally like just s- smoke a blunt like every day for Depends like. Depends on the yeshiva. Well, for sure, some of them <laughs> can't um, do that in Queens. Right. Queens, by the way, is, for people at home is Chavetz Chaim, which is called time, the yeah. city of Queens. Like, <laughs> by the way, because that's literally what it is. If you walk into Queens, it's it's cats, like San Francisco and Prince Sandwich Bar, and then just a big conglomerate. <laughs> no, of just but, I, but I disagree Chavetz with you. If you talk to the non Chavetz Chaim people in Queens, there's a whole... They think it's Bukhar. No, 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 that's no, the first no. thing. There's another like the John, Bro- the Brody Elias. I know. It's, the, I, it's, like, it's like it's like the the Weichsel bombs in my my sister. Right, that's yeah. the same world. Yeah, like this, no, there's, I'm sorry, people in Queens. This world barely exists. It exists in your dreams that Queens is like. There's a cool part of Queens. It's like no, what are you talking? No. About? There's a cool part of Queens. <laughs> no, no, but they want to believe that there. No, but they want to believe there is. Like you know, you know, my like Abrami's wife, my sister. I think maybe met her once. Right, Rachel Weichselbaum. Like. 
like she comes from Park Drive East, like the cool part, the other side of Main Street. It's the other side of Main Street, Zach. I don't even know what area that. Oh, know, yeah, oh yeah, 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 yeah. The one with that's, the park where there's tons of like four year olds playing without supervision. It's bad like it's no, but it's no. real. No, that that's the, like the cream of the crop right Look, there. I've met some Yechidim. Wait, there are some cool people. <laughs> Yechidim. <laughs> Um, shout out my friend Rel. She's from Queens. <laughs> She's mad cool. <laughs> it's one person. I dated a girl from Queens who lived down the block from Donald Trump's house. I think she, Skotsky also dated her. And I think that was Wait, wait, wait the, the girl from Jamaica States? Jamaica States. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She yeah, was cool. Yeah, yeah. We matched cool. on JFA multiple times. Jamaica. Sorry for never, never messaging you. <laughs> <laughs> she, grew up the, she grew up next to Donald Trump. I remember that like you dated her. From his original house. house. Yeah, I, remember yeah, I, I forgot her name. Not going to even name that her was name. like back in the day when I was, dude, she was the first girl I ever met on an app. And you know what first girl he also met her on? Do you know what app I met? I met her on a different app. Oh, this is good. <laughs> Bumble? Shabbat.com, baby. Oh, yeah! <laughs> Shabbat.com! Shabbat.com. Great. What happened? I think I slid into her DMs and was like, you look like Zoe Deschanel. And exactly. She, she looks, like. looks like Zoe Deschanel. Yeah. And we chatted for a little bit and then it went nowhere. And then a year later, or like, no, like half a year later, she met Mash with me on j went straight to my DMs, was like, I remember you from Shabbat.com. Let's rekindle this. And then we texted so much and then went on four dates. And <laughs> since then, we texted like I was in love with wait, her. Wait, wait, how old like, are you? I texted how her four <laughs> months. Of, I literally texted her like every day. How old were you at the time? 24. Okay, so the difference, and it was probably like your, your first time on apps at that point. Like the difference between- Not my first time talking to a girl. Or, no, not talking to a girl. My first time talking to a girl on an app for a long time. And first time like being all like, oh my God, what am I going to text it's, next? By the way, what's so funny is that yeah. when you first get on like these apps or any like- you text these girls for literally like three weeks and you start like creating an entire we relationship. Jokes. You, guys, you, got, you guys literally, you, you, you know each other, first but, you, but you never met them in person. And, <laughs> and then you, you meet, meet them, them. You, meet, you meet them in person. No chemistry. DOA, <laughs> no chemistry. You just wasted four weeks. Also, it's like, you don't go out with your friends to a bar because what? I'm talking to a girl on J-Stripe. I, I, I feel Dude. like we're in a relationship. <laughs> like, <laughs> no, no, no. Dude, I literally was like, people will be like, are you single? Are you, are you like open? I'm like, I'm kind of seen somewhere now. Like, like we, like, we have a very strong meme game going on. Like, I'm not gonna cheat on her. Yeah. Like, I'm, I'm super into her second profile picture. It is so cute. Like, I, yeah. I, I feel like, I feel like she gets me, bro. We, they were good dates. It's just like, it just wasn't like honestly, it was not DOA. But like, it just since then, I've been like. Now, if you saw him on date apps, I'm sure we're all the same. No, like, now it's now I it's an two art. messages. Correct. Literally now it's an art. Messages. It's basically like one day. Maybe no, it's one or two maybe days. one or two days, and yeah, it's an art. And then like, yeah. but it, but every single text at this point in dating apps, you're sending with an agenda. You're like, hey, I want to know this specific thing about you. Then then that that specific thing. So I'm leading up to like where we're gonna go on like a first time meet up. Done. Over move. Right. Honestly, that's more game. That's I respect that and I like that. That's more game plan that I put in. I my this is giving out the secrets, boys. No, just this is like how I simplified my own life. What's your two texts? I send two texts. So what are they? The first text is responding to something specific in their picture, either like something that they're wearing, never their body. Something they're wearing, where something where they are. Maybe they said something funny. I respond one thing to show that I have a sense of humor and that I paid attention to. If she responds anything at all that's in the, of like, oh, hey, whatever, anything at all, I go, what do you Yeah, like, honestly, I really love your vibe. You want to meet at this and this specific bar at this and this time and this date. Oh, wait. Done. This is a. And does it work every time? No. But it simplifies the heck out of my life, and it does work. And also, the reason why it I works want is your girls want, want that confidence. They, they want that. I yeah. It's not even confidence. It's just like, no, they want that talking to you. Meaning, they want that confidence. They don't want yeah. it. They, how the many, biggest, I have one question. Yeah. How, many yeah. date, how many dates are you losing out because of the fact that you're going for the grand slam? I don't care. You don't care. I don't care. You, you know, don't want to say girls are wiener move. Immediately now. I, no, I, no, 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 no. Not, uh, wait, wait. wait no, I've grown a lot in my life. No, no, no. Listen, listen. No, what I'm saying is as follows. This not that this move is your move, but this is a label wiener mentality. That move. Like you take a million shots, eventually you'll hit. Like you know, it's like a throw something at the wall. That but you need, but but like you got to show a little charisma for a little bit longer of a time. Right. It's like it, it's like it's meeting a girl and saying, can, "Can I marry you?" It's just like what? No, it's not. It's it's coffee. I'm Jay Swift. It's just it's just a little. It's it's quick. Even for, I think for anyone, it everyone is, would agree it it's quick. It's quick. Non Jewish. It's, it's worked enough for me that I'm not willing to go back to the days where I'm like, "And should I text next?" Like, is this like 
I can't. I no, can't. I, I get so I only, by me, it doesn't take energy out of my mind. It's it's it does. quick. So for it's me, easy. It does. for me, it, right. it, okay. So I know I've I gotten to, to the, so I've gotten to the place where um, honestly, my texting game is is pretty strong, and I don't. I, I, it doesn't take any energy. I know exactly what I want to convey, this and that. It's it, second nature at this point. Yeah. Now, right. when I was coming out of Yeshiva, it was it was like a Gemara in my head. I was like, calling up, I was calling up my Rebbe and being like, yo, she said this, what would Tosa say? You know, like, I can't handle the situation. And, you, you know, yeah. I was like, she, like, she said the smiley face, but like, the smiley face wasn't an emoji. It was the, it was the colon with the parentheses. Right. Do you guys remember, Do you think she likes like, me? when you were texting girls, like, back in the old days, and, like, someone you were, like, texting, you were in that cute stage, but, like, you, you don't have like that stability. You don't really know. Like you're still trying to win her over. You're still trying to win her over. And then she would text you something and you're just like, I just don't know how she meant this. And like, you can't <laughs> ask. And you've been like asking friends, like, what do you think she meant? <laughs> like, like, you've read it six different ways. Like you can read it like this. Like, <laughs> does you want me to ask her? Like, it's not like I was someone that was like super uh, involved with girls either. I grew up in like a pretty far away. Right forbid we, it. Pretty far away. Right we know but by the time I <clears throat> got out of there and was like 18, I started, you know, getting, having conversations with women. Anyways, I was, when I met Warren, we were both 20 years old. And I still remember like the first year we had an apartment together. I asked Warren. Like I'm six like, months in. Yeah. I asked Warren, I'm like, uh, uh, two girls I'm friends with want to come over and like uh, have a barbecue. Um, you know, do you want to join? He's like, I'm very uncomfortable with girls coming into the apartment. <laughs> What? I said no. <laughs> I nixed the women. <laughs> Bro, I was at, that was at the I've point by the way. Really it. This <laughs> is second. That was at the point that also I was I was in Lander and I was thinking I hated the Rabam there. I called up my sock and I told him I think I want to do half and half. I am in Lander tonight. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> <laughs> that was a great story. Yeah, that was a great time. story. But um first of all, Zach told me some wild. Um you told me outside. About what? About the person, you know, that's learning in Chavetz Chaim. I would not bring that up on the pod. No, we can't. <laughs> I can't. Why can't you say the story? It gives zero because details. Like zero. Oh, do I? I, I, I feel I, like I know the person. I will tell you outside. You might know the person. Either way, I don't. I, I happen to have some inside information on something that will blow anyone's mind about a guy who is involved with Chavetz Chaim, but I'm not going to talk about him. Oh, wait, 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 we're not talking about, wait a second, I'm going to, we can, we can cut this out if, you know, that, we can I, add, no, no, we can I'd add, no, 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 it's rest. literally 12 seconds. We're not talking, talking about it after. Oh, okay. Just, we'll talk about it after. Okay, whatever. Just, um, now I'm curious. I can't get it out I of know. my brain. Exactly. No. Why can't you say the story and give zero details? Because if it, he's very liable to watch this podcast. Okay, let him watch. I don't want, I don't want to see You don't want him to think. I don't want him seeing me talking about his, very personal business. Got it. Okay. Fair it's enough. It's not my role. It's not my role. I understand that. I understand He's that. He's so good. Shmuel wants to know. <laughs> Whatever. Um, I promise we'll talk about it. We'll, we'll get to it. Uh, in the meantime, so. I'll talk about the other guy doing crazy stuff. Oh, yes. Oh, well, that I would love to talk. Should we talk about that? Yeah, please. Okay. So outside, me and Label were talking about the absurdity of the fact that we all know a guy <laughs> who's in Colel, which means he. Went through the system and succeeded. Who yeah, currently succeeded. wears a black hat on Chavez, the whole nine yards. He's getting smicha. And he is currently seeing several people a month in his apartment. And he's administering heavy doses of mushrooms and LSD to them. And he's. That's what I thought you were talking about. No, oh, I'm okay, talking about fine. something honestly crazy. That. That's what I was saying. That's yeah. what I was going to say. Like, are we talking about shrooms here? Are no, we talking about LSD? But yeah, <laughs> this guy is a legend. I and, love and, him. I mean, this could branch into a lot bigger conversation if you guys want to about just like the, the revolution that like in the film world and psychology, but like just in a vacuum, this dude's a legend. We all know him. He's a good friend of ours. And I love seeing a guy succeed in a world that we <laughs> all failed out of. And but also like on his own terms, he's like, yeah, but I think this is cool shit. I think it's helpful. And I'm going to do it. Does, the name don't know. He's, don't know. No, they don't know. No. So then, like, he would not I would argue get not, Right. So I'm he arguing. I would argue he's not succeeding in that world. He's just not. No, he's correct, correct, bro. He's, he's succeeding. Succeed. No, he's succeeding for himself, but he's not. It's not like the world that he's in is now accepted, whatever he's doing. Yeah, that might be true. Yeah, but I say it once again. <laughs> <laughs> what? No, what? No, I'm saying he's not getting chilled. He's not a trendsetter, is what he's saying. No, saying like, <laughs> Rosa Parks wasn't a trendsetter. Was Rosa, Rosa Parks just wanted to sit down on the back right, of the bus. Same idea. Yeah. Like, but he, she changed the world. That's my boy. No, I knew it. Wait, no, it's good. You wanted to sit on the front of the bus, right? It was good. It was good. She changed the world dramatically. Like I'm saying, like she wasn't. He's not Jackie Robinson. Robinson. If you can hear us, you are Rosa Parks to me. By the way, it's funny is that like people were his first name. Yeah. yeah. 
But just his first name. Listening to this. No, 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 no. There's a lot of people with that first name. Okay. But anyways. But you can narrow it down. What's really? You guys have a lot of Chavitz Chaim rabbis listening to the Mislabel podcast? Really? I have no idea. Really? Really? You never. You, by the way, you never know. Uh, underratedly, you never know who's listening. We have a crazier listening. story. We have random week. people that just come up to us, and be like, "Yo, I love mislabeled people." Yeah. You would never freaking think would listen. Yeah, to I want to say podcast. a story that happened. Red name. <laughs> I want to. I, I would I, not. I will not put it past us in in a few episodes. First of all, first of all, okay. yes, yes, we did uh, an episode one week that had to do with like uh, survivors of sexual abuse and like Chaim Older and right. like different Rabbeim were telling my father that they listened or watched and that like they found it like very impressive or whatever. I don't know what that, if they were lying or not, whatever. Uh, I hope a lot of Rabbeim watched this episode. <laughs> oh God. Yeah, that's why I put the disclaimer at the start. <laughs> By the way, I just want to say one thing. I remember, this is a not nice thing to say. I remember as you're losing your hair, <laughs> you're getting your hair back. You like, what, what, <laughs> I'll be honest. Wow, thank I'll, you so much. For late, I guess you like, asshole. Like, how are you getting your hair? I'm not, that's what I'm saying. Like six to ten years ago, you had less hair. Like in first year, base take shit for it. No, but it's working. It's good. It's working. Let's yeah. plug that shit. I will, okay, I'll plug. Because yo, honestly, shout out to I was, Walmart brain Rogan. I thought you were going to be Ben by now. Bro, <laughs> I'll be my, honest. Forget Ben. My ben, brother ben is completely. My blood no, and flesh. we can't. We, we can use his name. He doesn't care. Okay. Look, my blood and flesh, Josh Baskin, my brother. Yes, Josh. Um. Is both and like we have the same genetics. I started fitting in eleventh grade. I was petrified. I was like, I'm yeah, gonna be yeah, full no. bald by base matters by second year. I started taking Walmart brand Rogaine, which is the same thing as Rogaine. It's the same active ingredient. Look, am I am I Lensky here? Am I you? No, no I don't have the world's most luscious locks. What about me? My my locks aren't luscious. Bro, I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, honestly, I'm honestly not label, yeah. label, honestly, you have a very good head of hair, but like you yeah, have like widow speaks. Yes, you yeah. great, dude. You no, I have one. For a Jew, this. for a Jew of your anxiety levels, like insane. <laughs> 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 By the way, 100, percent I'm getting white hair. You should be very anxiety. Bald. He's got a great hair. Lens, you ever touch Lens? It's like a dog's head of hair. It's crazy. <laughs> yeah. I'm not that, but yeah. No, but I want to say bad. it's really gotten better. Oh, thank you. Like I was, I thought that you were going to be able, like the, the sun's going to be able to reflect. <laughs> off the top of your head by the if time you're 25. If it ever gets that way, by the way, I, I'm, I'm already, I like the idea of, especially now with the ring earrings, I really like the idea of like just bald. I, I think I could pull what, it off. What, what it happens to be, give it 10 years, they're going to be cheap, good hair transplants. I was going to ask you, why did we're all going to look like Vegeta from <laughs> Dragon Ball Z. Just, like, <laughs> <laughs> just one day we like show up in the office like, hey guys, did you notice anything new about me? Like hair's here. <laughs> Oh, I just had him put a little extra on the top. <laughs> it's like, you know what it was? <laughs> okay, this is, I, I'm, I'm stealing. <laughs> no, keep going. I can't, I can't, I can't. It's straight up, it's stealing someone's comedy bit. It's like, he right. one of my favorite thing in Amar, but he's like, when women get a, when, a boob job, they never, they go from like an A cup to like a double D. It's like, for a guy to get the hair chance with it, that's like, commercial that, is like going from bald to like, oh, hey, what's up? Like, I'm lying to you. <laughs> One day, <laughs> one day, walking the army a lot, like <laughs> it's just a drastic change. Like, oh no, nothing. <laughs> what? I got a haircut. Yeah. <laughs> Stop being weird, guys. <laughs> no, I'm good. Unbelievable. <laughs> One second. <laughs> what are you talking about? I don't know. Um, yeah, so, so let me ask you. Um, yeah. The earrings, I think, is yeah, what, yeah. what inspired the earrings. Uh, why, why those? The gay community. No, um, I wanted my ears pierced for like a year and a half now, two years. I've always thought they were cool. I even, when I was a teenager, I listened to a lot of like heavier music and I wanted gauges. I no longer want gauges. You know what those are? What are gauges? Yeah, the big, gauges are the ones. big holes in the ears. Yeah, no, I oh, look like I, a black I, No. No. <laughs> no. I still bro, care. Bro, like, bro, that's like stabbing yourself in the cock. Like, no. <laughs> Again, no. <laughs> that's like, like your whole you're, in your penis. And no, okay it's not. But it's okay. Terrible. Sure, sure. You're, Honestly, sure. I just, I've never seen one person make those look somewhat cool. Look, look, look attractive. Not even that. It's, oh. it's a taste thing. I, I personally think they look cool. I think a girl with it might be a little much, but like, I do think guys are cool. Can you ever fix those? I always wondered that. I don't know, but I'm pretty sure you take it out, your ear's going to be kind of a low, <laughs> like, you know, a bagel. <laughs> no, you always going to have to hold that size. Or could it like, could the ear. The hole definitely closes up, but it's not going to close oh, it up. It does close much, up? But not that much. You these always guys, have you'll, Oh, these guys? You're talking about no, my. No, no. Talking about the gauges. But you always just have a, have a, a hole in your ear, like very clear. I, I'm not sure. 
Or, so especially question. some people have gauges that are the size of. Uh, I'm like. I didn't know they were called gauges. They're called, I didn't. Yeah. I figured he was called. So, them. but but I've always wanted these. Um, it is annoying. I can't even take these out and swap them for another like. I don't know, like a certain amount of months, or else the hole just like closes like that. Right. Like, the, like, yeah, of course. Close. I'd argue that you wanted them since you were a really little child because <laughs> when we were kids, we used to make fun of the fact that you have huge earlobes. Remember? Whoa. You used to flick them back and forth. Do you know about the way I used to drink? You used to drink, you used to take one ear. He used to, this is how Zach used to drink. I don't so, know about anyone. Zach used to drink everything. Every time he used to drink, he would drink like, like this. Man. Dude, I Why? I had like a weird ear mm-hmm. thing. I would only when I was drinking, I would just sit there in my house <laughs> drinking juice and just like crunching my lobes into my ear. Like but I love playing with. It them. was the only way that he. By the way, Zach, if you want to like put on the the headphones, I don't know if you like you've gone without them, but you may like it better. I meant to tell you earlier. I'm, I mean, you can let me know. It right focuses me. Makes me. Let me know right now. Feel if you like more like I'm in a studio is a good thing. Okay, so, so let me try. It focuses me. I better not like oh. them. Ooh. I'll try sound? him for a bit and then I might okay. take you can always take this them off. Yeah. I, I personally feel like I'm underwater when I have them. Yeah, that's I, yeah. I feel like it's too claustrophobic for me. I like right. having regular conversations. Me personally. Right. It is, I them. feel more yeah, I literally feel physically farther away from both. Right. Of you. I like them because of that. I like that it's like uh if I I think it focuses me. That's it. I have clearly yeah. undiagnosed ADHD. <laughs> uh, uh, anyways, um I feel you. So uh, how's yeah. the experience been? I'll take it off for now. Yeah. How's that? How's experience been? I mean, pe- people. Is it annoying that everyone comments on them? No. Or, or does everyone comment on them? You don't get these and people. like have an issue with people. Like I like it when people. First of all, everyone said very positive things. Like everyone likes them. The best compliment I got was someone was like, "I literally didn't realize you got earrings because they just kind of fit who you are so well." I just kind of like, I saw them. My brain was just like, "Oh, he's always had those." Like I just never noticed. I'm like, oh, mm. you're an idiot. I'm I mean, like, they're, not, they're not that big. They're not loud. They're not they loud. Know, they don't I still don't realize they're there. They don't give blind. you big ones at your, at, when you first get them. Or maybe they do, but I chose these just because they're, you know, quieter. Obviously, when I'm able to swap them out, I will keep these. I like them a lot. <laughs> I'm going to put weird shit in my ears. I'm going to play around. <laughs> oh, my God. I'm going to I'm make a fool of myself, so hard. obviously. Oh, my God. Yes, I'm getting the long e-boy ones with the crosses at the end and going to show. Yes, I'm doing all of that. Yeah. Of course. You in a place where you like literally don't care? Like it. Oh, first of all, I wouldn't actually wear. I, I I don't I'm not here to like offend people, but like do I don't like someone's like, would you walk into Chafetz Chaim with them on? I'm like, yes. <laughs> like I really am thank Sorry. God at a place in my life where I'm like very okay with myself. I don't think this makes me a morally worse person than anyone. And therefore, why can't I walk into an academic and religious institution I used to be? Right, right. Would you pierce your nipples? Would I pierce my nipples? Like, like on a dare? Or like if I, no, no, yeah. no, no. I'm saying, no, like, I is that... To? No, I don't want to, but, like, my, my friend amazing. just got his <laughs> no. nipple pierced, like I, and I thought it was... I don't know what I can talk about on this podcast. I recently had my first experience with nipple piercings, N- uh, <laughs> and I can't on it's, way. No, it's I, honestly, um, dude, I, don't knock it. You try I, something interesting. To by the way, no. I'm, no way, I'm with him. I'm with Zach. No, way. Kind of nice. no way, I'm out. Hate it. Don't even want to think about you it. You haven't tried. It. <laughs> but when someone tries giving me a purple nipple, is that what it's called? <laughs> purple nipple. <laughs> a purple nipple. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I forgot what it's called. Give me a break. A purple nerve. Warren used to like try pinching my nipples. I was literally like, if you do that, I will deck you again in the face. Like, <laughs> and that's what he stopped doing it for good. Like, when you realize nipples, when like you, I'm an agitator. We all know this. I, I do right? not so, want anyone like that. Is that is like trying? That's like squeezing my balls. Like, no. <laughs> if it's, I would have known that, I would have never it's gone. Like after very, that. very uncomfortable. It hurts. It's just not something I ever want to experience. Do you ever really think about the fact that we have no reason for these right? other than for other dudes to inflict pain on us? They're just Literally, there they're to just be there. agitated by by a dick. Like they're not. They right. have no purpose. Right. I, Nipple. Man, I, yeah, I don't no know. No purpose. But I, it's right. very yeah. It's very odd. Yeah. I always wonder that. Like, why do we have them? Like weird evolutionaries. There must be a reason. Have you? You've definitely looked it up, and you've clearly seen there's no reason. I know. I have not looked it up. Really? Should we? Go, can we Google? Should we like, Google? Jamie, Jamie pull up. Yes. Yes. <laughs> right. I know. Why? Why do men so have nipples? Yeah. No. 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 I would write it as what is the. What is the, what purpose, is the of a nipple? purpose of male nipples? Yeah, what is like the, the scientific purpose? Yeah. Time out on a, on a female, For you have a male clear nipples. I get yeah, the milk right. comes out of there. I was have a reason. I was thinking something like, else. Why do women have vaginas? I was actually thinking something else. What were you thinking? 
We'll talk afterwards. Sure. <laughs> you can teach me. Teach me what there's, women's nipples are for. No, there's only so like. Yeah. No women. Yeah, women they're there because uh, the baby. That's they suck. What? What's up? <clears throat> Unless you're one of the rare men who can use their nipples to breastfeed. <laughs> yeah. Unless you're one of the rare men who can use their nipples to breastfeed. Who can do that? Apparently there are rare men out there okay. with parents. Have you ever met a guy? Men benefit like- from this seemingly redundant body, body part for a much more common season, common reason. Nipples respond to sexual, sexual stimulation okay, that's what I was gonna, That's what I was going to say. They're there for sexual stimulation. That's what I was going to say about Okay, that's literally what I was going to say about women. Oh, so but, but it's much not. more intense with women than just for... Maybe there are males out there that... But you know what? This is this is going to fuck me up because now I'm going to walk around the world and I'm just going to be like meeting new dudes and I'm just going to be like, can this dude lactate? <laughs> like, like, I'm gonna be like, yeah, that guy, the guy who like keeps ordering salads when we go out to eat and nothing but salads. I'm just, like sure that he got milk. Like, this, like, you know what I mean? Like, it's like a personality type. Like, I'm just gonna always like be wondering. That. I'm an INF uh, <laughs> nipple feeder. I, I didn't even know about the way that. Here's the question: That's crazy. If, if you could lactate, would you do? Would, would for you, I'm saying, would you help your wife out? She's she's tired. <laughs> would you, they will, these are questions. Get, they will can't even count. I don't want to think about it. It's so, so out of it. They're so out of, it. so out of his it. realm. If I find out I could do it and like my wife needs a break, dude, I would love to bond with a kid like that. Uh, <laughs> that's the weird part. I'm just gonna play baseball with him, okay? Yeah. Like I'm gonna give no, the kid I'm a shit minute. at baseball. I <laughs> Zach's like, I'm shit at sports. Suck my nipple. Zach, Zach. <laughs> no, so when the kid, you know, grows up, he's like, Dad, you never like play catch with me. I'll be like, my hand eye coordination's horrendous. However, I did feed you from my nipples when you were a kid. So we exactly. can you teach him how to dance. Yes, yes, I could do that. Underratedly, <laughs> yeah. Like actually it's not underrated. You're probably the best dancer that I know. Thank you. I was telling him outside that being the best from dancer that anyone knows is like but I saying know like, <laughs> yeah, no, but I'm not even saying that from but like, like when it comes to break, I've seen you break I did your break dance videos. You used to put up a lot when you were like oh, really trying to get out there. Like, I guess yeah. when you were 25, 26, you're really like in Williamsburg, like, you know, becoming friends with a lot of like people in the community, bro, you're dope. You, you've been doing it. I remember since like you were in ninth grade, you like, even before then you were like, you've been practicing. Yeah. Obviously I went through, there was a whole bunch of years in Shiva when it like really fell by the wayside. And, you know, if anyone from Yeshiva's out there, let the kids do their art. Let them practice their art. It's yeah. really important to us. Keeps us happy. But, yeah, um, I took it really seriously once I, like, got my own place in Queens. I was out in, you know, right. the clubs. And, uh, yeah, I, I love dancing. Like, my favorite thing to do in the world. Um, You've been on a few, like, mu- music videos and different things from it. I've been on three Jewish music videos and one not Jewish house DJ from Miami. <laughs> I was in a music video. It's stuff. pretty damn cool. Yes. I would love to send me work. I'd love to work more. Zach, what does the future hold? Well, <laughs> I'm definitely moving to Mars and when Elon gets that. Like, I don't know. No, give me the next the next six months to a year. Like what's I'll the be older for me? No, for you. Like for Donald maybe. Trump. <laughs> Honestly, I hope the guy gets back in Twitter. Uh, <laughs> just like talking not to a Trump fan, talk- but a big fan of Trump Twitter. Yeah. Um, okay. What? Six months for me. Okay, so just watch Trump running again. Love to not be Trump running again. Uh, I don't think. I think he's going to run again. I also, also, I'm not allowed to have an opinion on politics because I am the least read in politics person you know. You probably know I know nothing about politics. (laughs) Nothing. (laughs) And yet, you did you see how vehemently he goes? I'm not a Trump fan. How could you? I know enough. About it. You're ass. like I know, I know enough about him grabbing things. That that I, don't don't I just I don't click on the articles. I, it's it's actually bad. Like I I want to be more like. Do you know the president? Is? Yeah. Okay. Um. You want to be what? I know that the president's son is a cool guy. <laughs> <laughs> it's real dope, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> he likes tiny whities. <laughs> um. No, I would like to be more politically minded. I think that at a certain point, it's awkward. I'm 28. And like, yes, I lived in a tiny bubble in yeshiva where like no one knows anything about politics. Everyone's just like, I watched Ben Shapiro last night and now I have opinions. You know, like, <laughs> it's like, eat your oatmeal, my shut up. <laughs> Wait, we'll just spit Dude, it. as a first, that's my first spit take. <laughs> that's a, that was that was that was, that was, that was last, Zach's first yeah. spit. Eat your own no Not bad. Hey. <laughs> oh wow, dude, that was hilarious, Zach. Yeah. yeah. So go on. I would love to be more. I I, I do look. I think that the people who are into politics and they're not just into the like. Oh, aren't Republicans or Democrats different? Like, that's dumb shit. Like, people are at, like, 
My friend Schnitz, like, knows politics, kind of knows how, like, things in the country work. Right. I think it's important. I would like to be that person. It's just every time one of those articles shows up that could teach me something about it, I'm like, hold up. There's this dog on Instagram. There's this <laughs> video on YouTube. This utter bullshit I'm going to watch instead. And I just got distracted. I would like to be a more civic-minded adult, but... Memes, bitch. <laughs> you have like oh, you, you want to say no, something? I was just gonna say what he was saying. We have a friend who's actually knows politics in that sense, how the country works, and like oh yeah, yeah, yeah. is he you're talking about? No, 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 not at all. There's someone else that we I'm know. Sure. Is he seems like oh, Izzy he does. But no, like, but they're no, not usually, usually, you know, right, like, right, not right, more from how a, the corporate. Oh, oh right, I'm right. like a moron, but I, I don't know what to do. he knows how the corporate JP Morgan no. world of financial Who banking knows how, inside the government knows works. how the political branches of the government right. works and 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 Ooh. The, 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 oh yeah, 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 yeah. Like, he understands yeah, yeah, yeah. that yeah, like, yeah, yeah. and he knows both sides and, yeah he knows everything and he, and he, right, he knows both sides and he happens to be conservative so someone it's like, who could like talk about just the issues at hand from both sides with like facts is already like you I you were my respect. But like, yeah. Can I tell you a hilarious story? Actually, when I was in uh, fifth grade, um, in I was a couple times in Brooklyn, and I still remember I was taking a so you know certain teachers hold the door open, like open the door to the classroom, sure. and like I don't know, I don't know why they did that. That made no sense to me. But like, I, there was like a water fountain. I was going for a drink, and I still remember who it was, it was Mrs. Bronstein. She taught the other class, the parallel class in the fifth grade. And I'm taking a drink, and all she's all of a sudden she screams. Even Label Wiener knows what the Bill of Rights is, or what the Constitution is, or some one of those things, right? That's and she's nice. like, Label, come here. She's screaming to her class of 30 people <laughs> and 30 kids. And I come into the classroom and I'm like, uh, Label, tell them what the Bill of Rights is. Now, mind you, I don't have any relation, like any, any form of like, I've never spoken to this teacher in my life. Like, I was just, my father was the principal. I guess she like knew who I was. And I just totally bombed. <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> I actually had no freaking clue because <laughs> I didn't have a freaking clue. Right. I didn't. Uh, I was like doing nothing uh, at that time. But I why just, did she think that you did? Because I guess she assumed, like a pr- fifth grade, you probably right. should know what that and, is. And like, like, and she assumed, like maybe, like because you're the principal's son, like no, nothing to do with the principal's academic. son. If anything, that would be a better reason why I shouldn't know it because I like thought I was going to go to like hit on or something. To be fair, <laughs> do you think anyone our age knows this way? at this point? Or at fifth grade. No, no. Maybe it was the Constitution. I don't remember. It was something that was like <laughs> fundamental to the right. country's origins. I Reader's think. Digest. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. Okay. Maybe that, was a, maybe that was a stupid story. Maybe a stu- remember Reader's Digest? Like, that's great. Yeah, maybe a stupid story, but I don't know. In the, t- in the moment, it felt funny. Yeah, We're but no, it's okay. It. It's, it's, <laughs> it's, it's okay. You bombed again. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, allowed, I'm allowed one stupid story. Oh, 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 one bomb. You're allowed several. <laughs> After this setup, I'm allowed at least six. Yeah. Oh, by the way, like, so I've, I have watched your guest podcast. No, I've never watched a full episode because I have diagnosed ADHD and <laughs> <laughs> there's not a chance of life. Getting, I don't get through an hour of anyone's podcast, including yours, but uh, this, to see the studio in person, it's worth coming here and having a visit. It's really nice. It's really cool. Um, Thank you, Zach. Good, good freaking job. Uh, are man. you thinking Warren for this? <laughs> I do, no, I do not think. Okay, good. As long as you day. realize you're only thanking me. Yes, and, and the guys who helped you. And is he, yes, yes. But by the way, this was my, vi- like, this was my, uh, we explained this before. It's labeled like the Elon Musk of no. podcasts, right? Now. <laughs> this is his vision. No, this is not my He's vision. a Van Gogh. This is my, um, <laughs> you saw the shirtless pics that came out of it? Elon? Yeah. No. The dude is shaped, I don't even know what he's shaped. <laughs> it's Pokemon? Oval. I don't he's know. He's oval. <laughs> he's got a really specific, weird body type, <laughs> and it's hard to describe. <laughs> Wait a I second! I didn't even see this. I was literally I, thinking I, that. If I pull it up, will it, will will I see I it right now? I was literally thinking that. By the way, I have a hilarious thing. It's a, whatever. I can't say it because it's gonna be deemed a sexist. It's a woman who has. A, <laughs> I'm looking he, at it right now. That's not real. <laughs> this he, yeah, yeah. He, like, what is that, bro? He, also, he's blindingly white. <laughs> <laughs> he looks like a mix between someone that just got dipped in acid and the Michelin Man. <laughs> He looks like a vampire who just like ate way too many Oreos, just let himself go. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? Like, when you put your like face in ass or something, it looks like your skin is dripping off. But <laughs> this is the wealthiest man. You're the wealthiest man in the world. <laughs> Fix your nipples, man. <laughs> Hey, bro, maybe but he's got crazy traps, though. He's got like, <laughs> he's like kind of maybe, built. maybe he's like lifting Tesla's. <laughs> he's kind of built. You know what it is? You know what it is? So what, you, what, is it? what is it? Is he built or is he not built? You know what it is? This is the weirdest mix of built and 
I've never seen a guy who's more out of in of shape. Like I don't, I don't know how to explain it. <laughs> I think he is an alien. Like that's why he wants to get to Mars. <laughs> he actually came from Mars, and <laughs> that's what a Martian. That is an ideal Martian man. <laughs> Bro, he's sitting there lifting. It's what it is. He's sitting there like lifting te- Teslas with like electrodes stuck to his body. Nobody's he's lifting so Twitter on his goddamn back. You, by the way, he's making such a freaking <laughs> shit show on Twitter. He's literally like, no, he, he's fucking it up. I, I have no idea. Yeah, totally. Are you kidding me? They're going. They're they're they're, they're about to have a major <laughs> Corcus. He doesn't want to buy it anymore. He's backing oh, out. Oh, really? Yes. Come on, <laughs> come on. No, he's not. No, I can't why. stop looking at these. Pics. He claims. He claims that. <sighs> sorry, I'm losing my train of thought. He claims that the, the they said they had a certain amount of users. Yeah, and turns out that they have significantly less. Most of them are bots, or a, a large number of them are bots. Yeah, and he wants the price reduced, which is, by the way, very fair. Um, like when you buy a. a, a uh, a building, you know, right? Right. Real you want to know if there's real vacancies you need to know, or not? You need, to know, right? you need to know what the income is, right? And if like income is 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 let's just say one forty, and you said it's two hundred, like uh, it's a different ball game. Like all of right. a sudden your number, right? It's you're like gonna go underwater. Like it's not. It's like if you're fifty percent occupied, but you have one person that's paying rent on thirty apartments because like they you're friends with the ball with with the landlord, right? So right. now it shows that it's eighty percent occupied, like, but it's not really because right. I want you guys actually, to know, you know I completely stopped following this. <laughs> <laughs> like the moment you brought in real estate, I'm just like, uh, no, but you. <laughs> I'm sure I could have gone. I just have no desire to listen. Uh, I was gonna say that you were talking, you live in a rent stabilized apartment. You were telling me before you were following what I was saying before. Put me on blast, bro. <laughs> I live in a very expensive premium building. <laughs> Why <laughs> put me on blast? Is that putting you on blast? I don't know. Um, Where, when's the last time you moved? Literally two months ago. <laughs> because I, I honestly I can't keep. I've lived in Crown Nice for two years, right? A little more than two years now. I've you should get an RV. Five apartments. I should. <laughs> you should get an RV at I this point. I because, because at this point, the amount of... The Clearly, amount. I like walk, Roven. I like Roven. So I'll shower in the, in the local Blink Fitness. Like, it's fine. <laughs> the amount of effort that you're spending <laughs> bringing beds and mattresses in and out of apartments is ridiculous, I'm man. Home, by the way. Did you I, do that? No, no. I've he, never he brought a bed anywhere. Mattress. Every time he moves, he's wrong. Same. Every time he moves, he just leaves his mattress. Dude, right that's <laughs> real talk. Real talk. I, d- I see. I've never taken a night. <laughs> Every single place I move to, it, it's like, hey, I'm starting new. It's a fresh me. Throws a six hundred dollar mattress out the window. No, literally, no, no. I mean, he has never taken anything with him. I take the clothes that he's wearing on his back. Bro, he just walks out. Dude, that's the way to go, dude. I have too many monthly attachments. Yeah, this is so weird. I, I like that. I, I'm working on honestly being less attached to my shit because like it's too called many boxes being, of all being a spoiled brat, rat bitch, privileged beach one kid has. Let me hear what you're saying. had the biggest house, the smallest house on the nicest block in Beachwood. <laughs> Where's the beach is that? Awesome what time true. makes you think you're too attached? How many? I brought with me to this apartment seven boxes of books. <laughs> and they are currently just stacked in my room. I have a drum set that I do not play because I have nowhere to put it it's in my room right now. I have so <laughs> much clothing. I just have a lot of, I, I would rather have less things. I happens to be, I was sleeping on a twin mattress in my old apartment for over a year, and now I graduate to a big boy bed, and I've got like a bed frame, and like it's it's a nice situation. So, <laughs> by the way, I'm so just, it really weeds yeah. out potential romantic partners when they're like still like no, we should date, like, and you're like having this conversation like with half your butt cheek off of your bed because you're sharing a twin. That's how it's gonna have to happen. You handled that with a twin. I handled it with a plum. <laughs> I, that I've never effed in a race car bed. <laughs> Dude, that'd be way cooler than my twin. <laughs> You'd be like, vroom, vroom, Catherine. <laughs> Would you not? Bro, I, if you have in your 20s a race car bed, like ironically, <laughs> it's a race car bed. you're you know? getting laid. Like, that's the coolest okay, thing ever. Do you, know, do you know, like, a bed frame? You know, like, when you're a kid, you have bed frames and, like, you, you can have different types of bed frames. So, like, oh, when yeah, you're, yeah, like, a three or four-year-old, like, <laughs> like a race, race car. car. <laughs> like, I can, by the way, I have no doubt that Elon has a Tesla. Like, yeah. it's <laughs> <laughs> there's for sure a company just that a truck, makes a, bed, yeah. a Tesla truck. <laughs> you think this a is the Model XXX. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Hey, add another X. <laughs> <laughs> so he names his kid X. He had a second one, by the way. 
And you had twins with his uh, staff. Like, huh? Yeah, and, and his, oh, yeah. and he, he believes it's like a, he really believes in pro. Like seriously, he said a whole statement. First of all, it gets even crazier. His father, his father had kids. Oh, I heard about Jamie. This. Pull it up, Elon. <laughs> Jamie, yeah, you guys haven't really made it to you have like a lackey. I know. You, come back. Back. you know that cost me like sixty thousand dollars a year. You realize <laughs> what? But Jamie gets paid a salary to show up to every right. podcast. Yeah, you can handle it. I'll be your Jamie. <laughs> oh, you will, legit. Yeah. Maybe I would take you up on that. I straight Elon up. Elon Musk. He, uh, there was something that just came up. Hold on. Oh, Elon Musk's dad, seventy six, confirmed secret child with stepdaughter. But this is a real thing. With his own stepdaughter. Yes, Elon Musk's lusty dad, Errol. <laughs> Errol. <laughs> so lusty. I'm, I'm, reading, I'm reading verbatim from the New York Post. Who? Where did they get the guy writing this article from? Pornhub. What, what? <laughs> This is guy. New York, in the, New York this is Post, guy. Bro, New York Post. Oh, New York, New York Post is basically porn up. Yeah, this <laughs> is the guy in the comment section of porn up. Like, lusty, come visit me, <laughs> bro. I, I've got recipes from the from the porn up comment section. <laughs> Those guys are delightful. Very nice people. You're like, I've never tasted a balsamic vinaigrette. <laughs> so, 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 so good. Wow. Right? Uh, Elon, Musk, Elon Musk lusty. Dan Errol has finally revealed he's serious. Every time you say Elon Musk lusty. A secret second child with his glamorous stepdaughter, whatever her name is. Can't pronounce it. It's too long. You know his mom was a model? His mom is gorgeous. Gorgeous. She's Elon's like an older mom. Girl. Right. She, she's, yeah. not, I mean, she's gorgeous for her. I don't wonder what she looked like when she she's younger. She's gorgeous yeah. objectively yeah. at any yeah, Man, for her, for, like for a 60 or 70 year old, like the one he took to the Met Gala, right? Yes. Like the one. Like it would be like 40 moms. <laughs> yeah. I, I, By the way, he would be the guy that would have like 40 moms. <laughs> We've already established he's not of this earth. So like, they're just playing. Those are pretend people. They're not. Sure, Musk Patriarch 76 welcomed the baby girl uh, with Jana 35 back in 2019, but only confirmed the news on Wednesday. The only thing we are saying, the only thing we are on this earth for is to reproduce. <laughs> That's a little much, Elon. No, Elon. He, no, that was his father. Said oh, his father. Uh, Elon just said the same thing. Somebody tells me he had some weird ass parents, like creepy weird parents. Oh, I think famously his dad was like very cult abusive, probably like, types. Cult, weird. Yeah. Cult. 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 cult, yes, cult, cult. yes. There's a culty vibe. The culty vibe is a interesting. You know, I've been a fan of his. His. I don't know if they're married. What's his deal with Grimes? Are they still dating? No idea. I don't really care, but I know that like she's baby mama. I've been a fan of her since I was in ninth grade. Had like 10th grade. I don't even know who he dates. He's dated her. What's her name? She's well, he dated Amber Legitimately Hurt, one of the well, coolest people on planet. What's her name? Grimes. I don't know her. Claire Boucher or something. The real yeah, name. Grimes. His, his first wife. Oh. <laughs> no, he was married. Wasn't he married to Tula Riley? I don't know. His he first was. wife. She's an artist. I know what Grimes is. Yeah. She's his a, first wife was. <clears throat> she's not no name. Not a regular person. Like, oh, no God. You know what we're doing right now? What? We're three white dudes with a podcast talking about Elon Musk. Like, <laughs> this this is mean? very charted territory. Like, <laughs> no one wants to hear this. <laughs> three dudes True. sit around jacking off to the idea of Elon Musk. <laughs> He's so cool. <laughs> it's such a big brain. Actually, you would love it, actually, by the way, because she wrote a whole article. It was actually <laughs> super interesting. Sorry that I'm like still going with it. <laughs> it's fine. 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 Fascinating. Who's this she's just a normal girl. She's like a regular girl. He, he at at one point, he was a normal person. I, I don't think, think so. Do right? you normal. think he learned Asperger's? <laughs> like he, he also he's had bad. his entire talking life. Talking about balling, bro. Look at pictures when he sold um, PayPal. Yeah, yeah. That's what I'm saying. So you saw Dave. You saw Dave Portnoy before he got his transplant. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. I was bald as. Mm. Yeah, my balls. Transplants are getting good. They're <laughs> getting good. Huh? Oh, they're getting guy Crown Heights guy who Dobbs have ever got it. And it's, it's great. <laughs> Dave Portnoy was an ugly dude when he was younger. And, and he's he got just fat because he ate a lot of pizza. And also, he, he wasn't good. He, 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 just, he had no hair. No hair. He's fat, everything. Because he didn't care. He was just trying to right. make a company. He yeah. Am I the body. first person you've had on this podcast who is not like a barstool guy? Like, I don't know anything about barstool. I don't, well, know, sure. is, I don't no, know that much about barstool. No myself. I know I know a lot about Dave. Not nearly as much as, as Label. My, my but like, podcast taste, I definitely go for like the like, Raunchy, kind of like not so politically correct guys, but I'm more of like a Andrew Schultz. You're like Dylan I've been fan. off. I've been off fapping for a while, so now I just listen to raunchy podcasts. No, Dylan is great. <laughs> you know, I'm doing no fap. Hey, what about Theo, are you a Theo Vaughn guy? How's that going? Obviously, there's been some messes, but going it's it's been much better. Yeah. What are we talking about? No fap. Um, oh, you're no fap. We, we're refusing to choke the chicken. <laughs> 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 the Fabrice the sheets. <laughs> 
<laughs> to Weird Al the Yankovic. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> to Weird Al the Yankovic. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I would argue to yank the weird owl. <laughs> <laughs> See, that was what we thought. That was teamwork. That, that was teamwork. That's teamwork. one for days, all right there. Yeah, I, I feel like a total third wheel over here. Like, <laughs> I feel like I'm first on the of all, bench. For, the, for the most for the most of this podcast, you haven't felt that way. I know. Okay. And we've known each other a long and time. The um for days, I'll give you the what I just said. Oh, hold on, you literally said before this pod started, like label basically just shut up. Me and Zach. <laughs> I, whoa! Yes. I did not say uh, label. Uh, I said let me and Zach take the lead because we. Honestly, have we have rapport. Me and Zach. Zach has come up to me and be like, we should do comedy shows together as like me and him just bouncing Hold off on. each other. Hold yeah. on. In, in fairness, I think I incorporated myself as the Chris Bosch. Beautiful. <laughs> I agree. Beautiful. I, but I'd argue Zach's been the LeBron James. And we, he's taken the lead, which we've allowed him to. And I, sure. I've been Dwayne Wade right now, meaning I thought it was going to be my team for a little bit. And I took a back seat. And Zach's like, and <laughs> Zach's, Zach's, sitting, I can Zach's sitting here like. You guys talking about tennis? <laughs> By the way, I actually know every player you just mentioned. Wow. So Shmally, seriously speaking, can we Dude, I follow House of Highlights and it's, I like how back into really? that. I'm not like a you guy who like watches basketball games, but you I actually were decent. Highlights? You said he was decent at basketball when you were that a kid. kind of you. I was shit at basketball, but I you, I liked, you thought you were good though. I did. Yeah. <laughs> Bro. He was the guy that came out to the court. He was taking like turnaround jumpers. One every eight went in and then he'd go on a hot streak, which would like win a three on three game. Yeah. But for the most part, he was losing he four of them because he went over 12. Listen, I had a lot of belief in my three corner. A lot of belief. Very strong, unwavering faith in my three corner. No, I, I now, now that I have some distance from that world and I've gotten good at other things, I'm like, okay, I suck the basketball. But in terms of you didn't suck, the, by the way, I'll tell you. I, I, I was I was good as, I was a very good basketball player as a yeah. kid, right? No, I didn't suck. Yeah, you didn't suck. I was okay. I love the sucked. game. I do. I do think it's a beautiful game. I, I'm like always open to play. I genuinely think basketball is a beautiful sport. I think baseball is the dumbest thing that's ever made. <laughs> and it's so funny. I think we need to like retire. We need to take baseball out back like it's old yellow and shoot it in the head. <laughs> like baseball, it's like it's done. It's done. <laughs> We're holding onto it the way Jews hold on to the filter fish. Like it's what our grandparents did. Like, <laughs> It's done. It's not a fun game. It's not fun to play. It's not fun to watch. We tried, we tried changing it by making crane A's and different things. It's yeah. like, put a player on second in the 10th inning. Like, you hear this now? Hold on. There's no clue. You know, in baseball right now, if, if, if the game goes to extra innings, I just found this out. Yeah. You know that they, if it goes to the 10th inning, I was just at the Yankee game, so I learned this. They put a player on second base to start, to the, start inning. the inning with a player <laughs> <laughs> a player on second. Is that not the dumbest? It doesn't just start as like a normal player. That's the dumbest fucking thing you've ever heard in your entire life. No, I'm sorry. Listen, <laughs> they're hurting. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> I'm pretty sure men's curling is getting more views than like the MLB is right now. Now, like, by the way, this is this is an argument I always have with Sabush. Sabush is like, no, the MLB is doing actually just as well as the NBA. If you look at the finals versus the World Series, he happens to be somewhat right. There's like the MLB is actually getting more views in certain ways. Really? Wait, it, it, I have no fucking clue. Okay, give sixty four year olds really have nothing gonna, to do in October. I was gonna say, give let the one generation of Americans die. <laughs> I'm serious. What? <laughs> we tried After the with nuclear COVID. holocaust. No one will watch Dude, baseball. COVID. COVID twenty. <laughs> no. Once a once a generation of sixty four old men die, baseball will die. It will. Die. It is going to be a. We relic tried for wiping our them out. Be a total relic. It'll be a thing played in the Bronx by like. We a tried wiping them out. <laughs> we, tried, we tried wiping them out. Joe Rogan didn't let us. <laughs> He's like, no, we need the eighty year olds. That's what's beautiful. It's a beautiful. It is. A, it is it's a beautiful, beautiful game. game. Um, Not as beautiful as Tom Brady, but a beautiful. I was going to say football still better oh, sport. Things oh. I would do to that man. The things, the things <laughs> has that new saying. Did you see him in that hurts ad? No. Oh, it's it's painful. When, 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 who's the guy who has a peanut shaped head? The, the quarterback, the fame Peyton Manning. <laughs> <laughs> Am I wrong? No, you're right. You guys look like aliens. He looks like a planter. The best. <laughs> <guy. the> <laughs> <laughs> he does. He looks yeah, like, yeah, yeah. So when he's in ads, it's like so clearly like okay, he's like kind of dialing in but like they're funny ads i recently saw brady and it's like it's just the most cringe shit it's just like whatever it's no one else cares I, in my opinion if you're if you're gonna be a big deal like a musician or a sports player and we know you're gonna shill off for money no one cares it's not even considered selling out we all applaud it go get your hertz check go get your like washer appliance get your disney money. go do an ad be funny like, and he mailed it in. Tom totally mailed it in. The writers, everyone is just awful. It's it's weird to see someone who is a god at something show up. You're saying he wasn't good? 
It was horrible. Oh, just, like it's oh awkward my... to see like a god. Like you are, he's god. He literally walks into the I see god, and then he did a couple. Of, he did a couple good ones back in the day for like electronic stores. And I don't stuff. know what you're talking about. I saw some of his stuff when I follow him obviously on Instagram. I saw some of his stuff. Tom Brady. Who, who, what's that? <laughs> Wait, who is he an interesting man? Who no, no, no. I'm saying. Tom Brady. I'm saying. No, I'm saying. Who doesn't, doesn't love Tom Brady? He seems like love Michael Jordan. <laughs> you, don't, you don't think he's like an incredible human? Like, in, in, yeah, he's like. I, I do like Tom Brady a lot. It's just a running joke that like is a foosh, and everyone's like, the whole label's just gagging on Tom Brady. <laughs> <laughs> Tom, <laughs> it's, hey, you guys can make fun. He to me is the greatest uh, winning player in really probably it might be in the last hundred years. He just Maybe kind of boring. I'll get him. I'm not, 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 not he's a dead, white not, quarterback. Other white quarterbacks seem less. I don't know Aaron Rodgers. Yeah, I don't know. But I, I don't guess. know anything about. I don't know anything about football. Why am I? Anyways, I don't know. Yeah, um, <laughs> guys, I just want to be part of the conversation. <laughs> I have no idea. I don't know. Either way, dude. You know what we need another of. There used to be football bad guys, like bad boys, bad boys. If, name, if, name me someone. Look, everything I know Who's about that the guy NFL look like like a murderer. Sorry. Everything I know about the NFL, I know from watching these like. 100 greatest NFL moments videos yeah. on charter buses on my way to camp step yes. trips, right? Yes. yes. There was these guys like Joe Namath, like these, these bigger than life, like these like monsters. Well, Joe, like, Namath, Joe Namath just wore a really big fur coat. <laughs> no, but also these guys, these guys were like sex with hookers on the red coke. Like these were party Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, this is the 60s and 70s yeah, in general. They were like, it was like fun. You know? No one was like working out. It was much they less their professional. Body yes, yeah. Correct. They were just like, like LeBron football. is like, not cool. He's actually like a very disciplined kind of like. Right. Well, and I would argue. Dad I would argue, but but that already started by the nineties. Already, it was already started. The eighties, even. It, take, okay. it took a Magic Johnson was the last person to be like that. To yeah. Be just like Michael no, would like dude, go down. Allen Iverson. Allen Iverson. Allen Iverson was. He, he didn't. didn't he do wasn't professional. He was a professional. Shit. No, but he wasn't. <clears throat> not that he was professional. He was still disciplined about the game practice. No, he was famously <laughs> not so disciplined. I thought about. He wasn't, wasn't so disciplined. He wasn't super disciplined. He makes he wasn't. AI, he happens to be Zach. I'm very impressed with this knowledge right now. Our friendship is at a new game. level. I never <laughs> thought it could. Yeah. Everyone know, I mean, everyone knows AI. But first of all, AI was in the 90s. But okay, that's one player. 2000s. Huh? Both. Okay, I'm just saying that's one player. Yeah. Most players were already shifting. What he's saying is like since 2007, 2008, it's really become like taking care of your body, like, yeah, yeah. like nutrition, TB12. Yeah, you know. Why, why is, why is <clears throat> sports players become such a very... They've also started getting more political and talking about like, yes, we, of course. We, well, are they becoming so first more of all, social media. professional? No. Morally, first morally, morally, better morally than everyone else? I don't know what's happening. I think it's two things. I think one, social media, now that everyone has access to themselves, like to each other, that made no fucking sense. <laughs> <laughs> Zach's looking at me, he's like, you're trying to sound like very, very like, coherent, <laughs> but you're not. <laughs> <laughs> Go back to sleep. Maybe you need another nap. Nasty. You're doing you're doing so much right now. No, honestly, I think it's because social media and people want to build their brands. And now that every person actually gets to know their players intimately in a certain sense. <laughs> I'm really trying to. You're like, really you're like to. stop trying to use such, but you're not a reporter. Stop using those big words because every word that you're using has something to do with sex. Stop. <laughs> No, I want to no. keep watching. No, so you're like, I want to keep watching you <laughs> fail. It's <laughs> no, so now in, the, in our modern <laughs> pretext is we are able to have an intimate. <laughs> in, the, in the modern pretext. <laughs> no, um, honestly, it's, it's social media. Everyone has access to each other. Yeah. And I think that players, their brands are much easier to build. Right. So beforehand. They have to be more. Confident. Okay. So before. There's less scrutiny, so they didn't have to do anything. They that also, but, but beforehand, but beforehand in the 90s, for example, yeah, just one thing yeah. when it came to like Nike chose Michael Jordan, mm -hmm. right? Like they branded Michael Jordan, like the NBA chose Michael Jordan. They branded him and they decided that he's going to be the next, the face, you know, yeah, the face, the face, right? The Nowadays, you control your own narrative and then you get to decide who you want to go right, with. Right, right, you know, right. it's a very, right. it's a very different that's thing. True. Now brands don't control you. You kind of control right. brands. That's true. That you know? Actually, I would also say, is it possible that just as a society, we expect way higher morals out of celebrities? Yes. Nowadays. I mean, we... Which we, is really just to say we expect normal morality of celebrities. I think but we, we, apparently we used to not. 
I think like, oh, you're famous? Yeah. You can murder. You can do basically whatever you want. So like, go ahead and rave. Like, you're fine. You're like, you're the president? Oh, you, you can have sex with Marilyn Monroe. Well, I always bring this up with people. Like, John F. Kennedy, like yeah. when we talk about cancel culture, everyone needs to keep in mind, the whole goddamn fucking world knew Mel Gibson hated Jews. Hated. And continued to have a career. He's still in movies. Like, yeah, it just he didn't, didn't yeah. affect I mean, I huge anti semite He was active, huge, like, active open, Yeah, because he famously got pulled over by a cop while he was drunk, and, and the cops tried to give him a ticket or something, and he, he just went on a rant against the Jews, you know? <laughs> Which is like people on YouTube. Like, you'll like, like, see a YouTube comment underneath, like, I hate Justin Bieber. And someone be like, the Jews. Like, what? <laughs> like, we just blame for shit, you know? And it's, and he just had a career. Like, there's just this thing. Oh, you're famous? Yeah, you're, you'll be fine. Yeah, you can hate Jesus. Sure. Now, now you can't. But they, I'd argue, can't say anything. I'd argue he still could get away with it. It's possible. I don't think cancel culture even works on that. Right. It's cancel well, culture no, for what they want us to be. Correct. Yeah. Was Nick Cannon canceled? No. But he didn't really do I don't remember what he did, but he wasn't like. <laughs> was it? By the way, he didn't that's say not fuck fair. Jews. What but did it, he say? But Cannon? He what? said something about like Jews owning real estate or something? Uh, he didn't say anything that is that bad because I would know what you're talking about. And I don't. It's whatever they decide want to be cancel culture. Exactly. Now, in 2011, Kevin Hart said that like he made a joke about what happens. If this, yeah, yeah, this kid becomes gay. Like made a joke about it in yeah. 2000 freaking 11. Right. Like where they being gay it. wasn't cool. <laughs> now it's cool. Like how could he have known it was going to become cool over the next 11 years? I'm stealing this bit from someone. I forgot who. It's very funny. It's just like. <laughs> we I, respect your honesty. I, 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 I saw it earlier today. No, it's, it's just, it happens to be. It's so funny. It's like we. The whole cancel culture thing is always based upon like things. They bring up things from like 10 years ago, 15 years ago. It's like, how the hell was I supposed to know that in 15 years from now being having a penis and a vagina was going to be like, whoa, let's go. (laughs) 15 years ago, if you were to say, you know, my next door neighbor has a penis and vagina, you'd be like, oh, Keep your kids away from that, you know? Now it's like the kid has, the next and never has a penis vagina. Oh, go to, they, they're running a daycare. <laughs> you should probably send them there. I really, by the way, I, I personally think this cancel culture thing is very overrated in that I don't think it's really such a big deal in society. I think that for the most part, if you know, as, let's use celebrities as an example, did Kevin Hart's career go south? Kevin Hart happened to be, he took a took stance a that, sim- that other no, that other people didn't take the stance. He apologized, but he said, apologized and I said, I don't regret it. He said, he's, he's, he's like, I, he's, he's, yeah, but correct. What we see is that it didn't affect his career. What I'm saying is the people who are getting canceled were, to this point where it's actually affecting mm-hmm. their career are the guys like Kevin Spacey who did something actually morally yeah. horrendous. Did he? People, I don't know. Yeah, 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 yeah. Or, uh, not Spacey. Spacey. Oh, not Spacey. Yeah. Who am I thinking oh, of? You're thinking of someone else then. Oh, Lucy K. I was thinking of. Okay, that's, I'm not talking about that on this pod. Like, but hold on, is that was that te- terrible in your? Opinion? I think it deserves to have career effects, hundred percent. I don't know I, what happened. I'm so Louis C.K. I don't want to get Louis C.K. Yeah, yeah. I I, I get the hell. Out I here. think it. What did Kevin Spacey? No, we I think it, I should think it should have. That's fine. No, it should not have career effects. Get the hell out of here. What did Kevin Spacey do again? Children? Yeah. Okay. No, <laughs> <it's not laughs> <any. laughs> I just like the way that you said it. You're, like, you're like Louis C.K. masturbated in a corner. The men, the women watched. The women knew that he was kind of going out of their career. Going, it's fine. But maybe, no. But besides that, it's just funny. You're like, what did Kevin Spacey do? Children? Ah. Oh. Fuck that. No. <laughs> yeah, Kevin Spacey, I think Kids he were molested. Involved. Yes. He raped okay. or molested or whatever. He okay. did something bad sexually Agreed. to an underage boy. I didn't know he was into it's like boys. Se- no, but it was more. It was, it was more than one case. That's pedophilia. Multiple I cases. I see a lot of things. Again, it's a shame also because he's so good at movies. When Michael Jackson, when Michael Jackson have been, uh, when Michael Jackson have been canceled in today's day and age. Well, Michael Jackson was acquitted by court of law yeah. and hey, 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 hey. He was acquitted by court of law. That's all I'm saying. And he's got a gorgeous do voice. He, do I think he did it? Probably. <laughs> but I'm just dude, saying. Dude, O.J. Simpson was acquitted by a court of law. He was? Uh, what? Oh, O.J. Um, dude, you said O.J. Simpson in my head. In my head, I'm like, R. Kelly? <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> that was the most racist thing you have ever said in that your not life. That's not racist. racist. <laughs> We're just talking about famous men who have done some bad shit to women. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> yes. No. So he, he I, was honestly, by Michael. It's, he did it though. The thing with Michael, it is interesting that like kind of everyone thinks like it was a child molester, and like did sort of get. A, I don't know a single person who's like, oh, I won't listen to Michael's music. I don't know anyone. The most liberal people. Dude, I don't know anyone. By the way, it's the same thing that we're talking about. But, but it's the same thing we're talking. This is the question we're asking. But it's the same thing we're talking about. Right. Because his music just overpowers. But it's also it's so great. But this is also the, also one the, second. Mm, yeah. It's also the same thing we're talking about, which is that 
no one is saying anything about John F. Kennedy for all this, you know, infidelity that he had in the in the White House back in the day. It's the same thing. Like Michael Jackson was in the 80s and 90s and in music, it didn't no one cared what you did. So but like would, nowadays, I, would he be canceled? It's very possible. No, but I would argue that no, because John F. Kennedy wouldn't even be canceled nowadays, probably because that relationship, while it's infidelity, it's not inherently wrong. Michael Jackson doing pedophilia. No, pedophilia, oh, pedophilia is all no, hundred percent. But, but he didn't. But, but he got acquitted. You think he would be? That's no, but Jackson got Even acquitted. Though he get, Jackson got acquitted. But okay. you know, you know the famous Rebby line. Yeah, they don't say these stories about you and me. Like the like, why do you have these allegations? For sure, Michael? why so you I, got I, a bunch I, of kids no, saying that, that, that this could be happened? Stupid. That, that could be dumb. I'll give you an example. I don't agree with that fully. Although he's got Macaulay Culkin uh, he's, in his he, corner. You're missing it. He is also Michael Jackson. There, there's people that can want money from him. Da, 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 da. It's right. like, How no, vile we should have. If there were if there were 42 women who came in, right? It's like uh, Bill Cosby, right? Like the Bill Chabelle Cosby. Said, hold on. Yeah. It's like Dave Chabelle, Chabelle said. Even, you know, how did he, what did he say exactly? He's like, even with Bill Cosby, since he liked them a lot, um, he thought like, I forgot how the line goes, what he was saying. But he said, 10, 11 in, he still didn't trust them. But by like 52, he started like, <laughs> Even if 30 of them didn't happen, there were still 2,000 of them. He's like, it's like if, if Bill Cosby raped 30 less women, he still would have raped two dozen women. <laughs> Which so is they had that many allegations. Yeah, 54, 54, bro. 54 women. You're not against them. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, I really wasn't. Guy, oh, Dude, wow. I, well, I want to play this for you. I, I, I was so never hilarious. a Bill Cosby guy, so it's not like I like lost. If that shit came out about, I'm trying to think who could like, like who could I find out about that would like actually like hurt me? Bo like, Burnham. Oh, you have to listen to me. Dude. You know, if that happened to Bo, if that happened to Bo, you know, by the way, actually, but, but I would need a couple weeks. Would you be surprised? Yes. Based, Bo Burnham? Honestly, if I found out that like Hugh Jackman like was secretly like murdering people, it seemed like such a genuinely good like dude. such a good dude. I would be really, it would, it would hurt. Bill would Cosby hurt. was exactly like that. Right, Bill Cosby was like the nicest. Yeah, yeah I know. Like, that's what's scary. He also, he, he revolutionized. He was like a very impactful person in society. It's like, an extreme, yeah, he was very impactful. Like this is, you have to listen to Dave Chappelle's bit on this. The whole thing, he explains how he grew up looking up to Bill Cosby um, as a comedian yeah. and how Bill Cosby did so much for the black community and right. all this stuff. And he's like, he's like, it was like, it was like chocolate ice cream, finding out chocolate ice cream. It's like finding out the chocolate ice cream. Like 54 women. He's like, but I like chocolate ice cream. I don't want it to rape her. <laughs> I, I know where you're going. That's actually, it's funny. That's what Dave, Dave Chappelle said. A, a little bit like, you know, kind of on the same track, like bringing it to like the from community every once in a while, like the Walter thing, every once in a while, someone that a Jew that people look up to gets involved in a scandal. Oh, totally. I still remember when a friend, a mutual friend of ours, I don't want to say the name of the podcast, but like he, he ran up to me one day. He was like distraught. <clears throat> He's from Minneapolis and there was a very popular, young, hip, cool, well-respected rabbi who did Kirov Campus Kirov in Minneapolis. We had a lot of people from, there's like from couples with kids in the community for right. this guy. He got caught in an FBI sting, soliciting what he thought was sex from what he thought was a 15 year old boy on Grinder, And all he heard was 15 year old on Grinder. That's what my friend heard. And he's distraught. He's like, I can't believe he would do this. And like, this is like someone that I like grew up and I learned Torah with. And like, he's talking to this 15 year old girl. And I'm like, honey, you don't know what Grinder is. Like, <laughs> that's not a girl. Like, <laughs> Amazing. Which, on some level, obviously the guy's a monster or whatever, but like on some level, on some level, at least I'm like, where are you going oh, with this? I'll tell you where I'm going with this. It makes him a a bit more of like a sympathetic character to me, only that like, oh, do you been in that the whole pedophilia thing I can't get with. But like the whole like, let's say he was an 18-year-old on Grinder and he's just stomped cheating on his wife. Like, I do have some sympathy for like dudes in the closet who got married. They went all the way married kids. They were just two in the closet. Fifteen, no, bro. You, yeah, go. You go straight I don't to jail. Know where you went with this story? By the way, this was about three and a half minutes. I'm just not really sure what the point was. You're like, you, you, the point is that if if you're gay and get married, you're like you're sympathetic to people hitting on eighteen year olds that, are, that, that are men. Like, was, no, we're not hitting this. I, was, up. I guess it was just like like the Bill Cosby thing. <laughs> What? What's that? What's that? Man, you you got to explain it because what just happened is as follows. I want to give a recap for anyone that has not listened to this podcast and has ever done it. Zach said that there was a hero rabbi in Minneapolis 
<laughs> that did lots of good work. <laughs> now, on top of that, he, so had, he happened to also be gay in the closet for many years. And Zach's friend was distraught to find out that he was on an FBI sting. <laughs> and he got caught <laughs> texting a 15-year-old on Grinder. And Zach's like, I'm sympathetic to people. <laughs> I'm sympathetic. I was like, I'm sympathetic to people who get married that are gay that then have to find out that Grinder exists and they can get their rocks off to 18 year olds on Grinder. With that being said, I also can correlate this to Bill Cosby. <laughs> oh, I'm unsure. Guys, I'm the best at podcasts. <laughs> Please edit that whole fucking story out. Holy shit. No, that is gold right no, there. The only reason I would edit it out is just oh because the God. audience might turn off the thing because they got yeah. bored during your form. Yeah. Period. I yeah. disagree. I thought that it was great. And then Warren is laughing and you probably can't hear oh anything. Oh, my God. So I Warren, disagree. Our, our, I thought that, that was great. You edit that out? That was my first. I give you no permission to release the entire podcast. Let me ask you, are we releasing this? Of course. We are. No, we're definitely. Yeah. We're <laughs> sure. That's offensive. <laughs> no. <laughs> this is. Uh, Zach. You need to understand something. We've shot, 18, out we the shot world, 18 episodes so far. Yeah. There's nothing that fucking comes close to the, 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 the level of where we've went <laughs> outside of, of like the yes. Shiva realm. I'm glad as we I did this. So so we did it really. Like, obviously, these conversations go on. This like, is yeah, completely stable. to me. Like, that's I'm just I'm saying, cool. obviously, I, 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 I hope that you guys have me again or that this this one continues because I really would love to have like a more serious conversation with you guys. I think there's a lot of things we about can talk Grindr? about. Why would you want to have, <laughs> about why you want to have a serious conversation? This is no. hilarious. But I also, I really, I needed it, man. I just wanted to shoot this shit with guys with a good sense of humor. Right. And it, the fact that other people can watch it and comment on it. Perfect. Great. Love it. <laughs> but oh Zach's God. like. I'm still going through in therapy how huh? I'm misunderstood and I need someone to see my very yeah, logical The best thing I ever heard about <laughs> learned in therapy is that I'm just like everyone. That was the mm-hmm. best thing I've ever heard in therapy. In what sense? Are you being serious? You're being, uh, no, that's a serious one. Explain. Uh, when you were in like the height of like a certain types of depression, like you almost, a light, like a silver line is like, not even a silver line, it's like you get attached to a story up. of like, I'm screwed up in such a specific right. way because I'm so deep and like, no one really understands my emotional right. things. Like they're, they're very intellectual because you're thinking away your pain. You're right. doing thinky pain. Right. I'm totally with and you. Then, thinky pain. Thinky pain. Right. I like that. And it's someone else told to me, and I always think that. Now, like, it's called terminal uniqueness. What you're saying, but yes, yeah. Yeah, and like, it's such a refreshing thing. When your therapist is like, "Oh, actually, no. Like all the shit you're dealing with, and like this pain, I've seen it before. And yes, you're unique, but like." Yeah, I, I, I could look in a textbook and like kind of tell you what's going on, and I could tell you things will almost for sure work for you because they work for other people, and find out you're like, oh, I'm normal, depressed, like a normal person. Okay, but there are. I, I would argue that there are certain things that are more less likely to go on. Like, like you may have depression, OCD, or like anxiety. You may have like a, a cake worth of stuff that is just as an example. A cake worth? Yeah, you could have like a down. That's not a saying. But. No, I'm, I'm making a. He's I'm, saying that. He, I know exactly what you're just saying. Just because you can have a million different issues that right. be, make it very unlikely. Like, it, right. Some people. I'll give you an example. Um, let's say you, you're born without an arm. Let me tell you something. There are other people who are born also without an arm. And I can tell you what this is it's that you're born without an arm. That doesn't take away the fact that the guy has no arm. Right. No like, <laughs> guy has no arm. That's painful. So that's oh, I was saying. not saying it's an invalid. No, it's it's no, it's not invalid. I'm just saying yeah. that it, you could be dealing with something, and people could be dealing with something that's more severe than the next person. Some 100%. people have a twitch. 100%. It could be the, the neurological issue of anxiety that they're dealing with is significantly higher yeah. than the next person. It's just it's no, a balance. It's yeah. a balance between it's, va- it's a balance between validating someone feeling feeling uniquely alone while right. al- while also. You know, healing their pain by showing them that they're not alone. Like right. it's a very fine balance. Beautiful, it's a very fine balance. Say it again. I said it's a, it's, it's validating a person to show them that, like to, that they are uniquely themselves. Like mm-hmm. you are, like you, the aloneness you feel. Like I validate that that unique feeling of like lon- loneliness that is like anxiety and depression brings upon, while also having to heal them or help heal them 
by showing them they're not so alone. That's right. a really yeah, right. difficult balance. Right. Really? I agree with you a million percent. Anyways, this is a lot less fun than the last hour. I was going to say, like, yeah. this has been really <laughs> earnest. Someone please throw a dick joke in here, like, immediately. <laughs> no, I like it. it should be a also, I'm going to just stop playing piano just in case I, in 22 years some allegation comes out of me that's not true. And I'm just like, no, 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 I'm not lanky. I'm just, I'm, <laughs> 22 years, like, some, <laughs> some kid in show going to be like, Shmoney Ward gave me candy. I'm going to be like, in those next six months, I'm just going to grow a pot belly and be like, I, I don't play piano. I have a question. <laughs> do you think you've done anything in your life or said anything Zach, talk to that? Me. Do you think you've done anything or said something in your life up to now, you're 28, that would be cancelable if you were a celebrity and it got out? 100%. Yeah, are you an have you lived it? with me? In, no, I've always really canceled. Yes, I have you always. Out of your mind? You out of your mind? I have that always is- said this. If there was ever a camera, okay, on my life, and there was like, at any point, three days out of any given month and it could be any random three days the shit that comes out of my mouth it's cancelable <laughs> cancelable upon upon saying like upon yeah. said effective thing immediately. effective immediately this, this guy absolutely heinous this, shit yeah like no, I got you don't have a twitter no it's very simple <laughs> he's the guy you know like Louis CK has his own like website because he got kicked off Netflix and all the public streaming He's a guy that should never aim to even try to get with Netflix. Like, just create your own website Correct. and start your career. This way. Way. Because Shout out also, to the homie Andrew Schultz. I don't know yeah. Also, yeah. Joe Rogan was saying, you know, that's you know what he made? He made it yeah. three times. He made three yeah. times. What, he would have got off Netflix? No. By the way, and he bought it back from Netflix and just made three times. By the way, that's like my hero. Like, Andrew Schultz. Like, that's the guy I, like, I would love. Like, everybody would, gets everyone, those jokes. You watch you know, it? But, like... I'm I a big Andrew Schultz fan. He didn't I watch studied, it. I didn't either watch it. Dude, I studied him the way we were talking earlier, but I studied Michael Jackson. I study Andrew Schultz. There's comedy? Pure confidence. One of the most confident men to ever Me and Zach were playing. Why? Yeah. I don't know. Think, what does he do? Watch. Yeah. Just, yeah, I'm not going to sit here and explain it. it. You got to watch his clips. The man interacts with strangers when he's on stage with such a balancing act between being like really like cancelable shit and then just like winning them over and being on their side. He gets away with racist jokes no one else gets away with. He gets away with sexist jokes no one else gets away with. It's way of just being coming off as likable, even though he's kind of has the you know personality of like a, a frat guy. So he's you want to think awesome. you think he's one of the great you think he's one of the great uh, comedians of, of I, I, the right generation. Now, Hear I me out. So. He is one of the great great all time all whoa, time. Whoa, 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 slow down. I did not finish my statement. Proud workers. In terms of his written material, he doesn't hold a can. He's not even in the top right. ten right now. He, he's the, very good at improv. Yeah, he's a fantastic improver. I don't think what he's a great writer. Like on the spot. Right, on the spot, yeah. Yeah, like he's not a far he's, writing. He's, he's not is a great great comedian. He's not John Mulaney. He has charisma that makes you want to like him no matter what comes out of his mouth. So, like, when something heinous comes out of his mouth, it's just this smile and this ability to just, like, put a smile on your face. is like, I can't be upset at him for yeah. making that wildly racist joke. Ah, interesting. He's yeah. just joking. Yeah. No, I never... He went uh, to I have to listen to his... No, but, Honestly, in terms of the cancelable thing that you said about me, it's because ninety nine percent of the things anyone knows me that come out of my mouth, if you, unless you're getting in a serious conversation with me and talking like yeah. therapy and things like that, I almost do not believe or do not mean, and you have to understand that they're all sarcastic. Almost, yeah. almost everything I say is you still not. Probably shouldn't say some of it. Yeah, yeah. I, probably, I probably should still like lay back, but like, oh, can we talk for a second about you for one yeah. second? I've been meaning to rip into you for so long. Oh, please. For, the, for so long, you've been ripping into me for 25 years. But the, the di- I want this to be on a public forum. The difference between your in-person persona, like who you are in a room with the guys and the girls, and who you are on Instagram is hilarious. Wait, why? Because on, like once in a while, you'll be like kind of rowdy on Instagram, but 90% of your social media outposts is just like, Hey guys, Brene Brown here. <laughs> yeah, gather around. Just gather around. Grab a cup of but, coffee. But I just want you to know that if you've been hurt, so have I. I've been there. And honestly, <laughs> you're never gonna make your life until you learn to be vulnerable. And like life is just beautiful. And sometimes you just have to like smell a butterfly, let it lick you in the butthole. And then you like talk to Shmuley anywhere in person, and he's just like, God, my cock itches. Like he's just <laughs> He's just not that guy. You're not. Brene Brown would not like you, bro. I'm so sorry. <laughs> wait a second. Wait a second. Wait a second. I have to defend myself on that. No, that's the two. That is the beauty of Shmuley War. This is what I've always said. The beauty of 
Shmuley Warren for myself <laughs> is that I have both these sides and it's very difficult. By the way, dating is very difficult for me because how do you reconcile getting in the car with a guy that's blasting one direction while also like scratching his nuts while also like vault, like getting into your like therapeutic like child you're not the first bisexual these girls have met <laughs> <laughs> metrosexual i'm metrosexual i think no one even says it anymore <laughs> no just i think the genes say remember it. when people used to say that that metro. was like a thing when we were in high school like yes. you wore skinny jeans yes yeah metro, it's metro. Not a, now you're just a you? non-toxically masculine <laughs> Now you just like skinny jeans. <laughs> you just like skinny jeans. And fr- no, you're you're beyond skinny. You're like an Uggs guy. Yeah, yeah, bro. yeah. Hey, that's totally true. One hundred percent. Also, I can very much see you getting like a facial. Do you get like? Do you I like got a pedicure, hey, bro. I got a pedicure yeah. two days ago. You don't even know this. <laughs> you're not. You're not. You're not. But you're Neither. wealthy. You're just a rich kid. <laughs> I'm just. By the way, that's really what it is. Wealthy kid. I'm a straight wealthy Shmully privileged is, is man. The poorest. Well, well you, you are met. the most broke rich kid I've ever met. And yeah. always said this. Literally, I, I well, have, I have the one... richest poor kid I've ever met. <laughs> oh, hey. Hey. By the way, I'd argue that it's better to be the way he is than this. Right, right. I, I can have one it? cent in my bank account and me and Lay will be I'm like, I found this house in North Woodmere. Do you want to get it? Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, oh, I was at, like, even at Crown Heights. I was like, I was like, I remember saying to a friend of mine, I was like, I was like, oh yeah, like Shmuel Warren's in Miami again. Like. Yeah, I guess he's selling his body on the streets. Like, not really sure how he's paying. Like, you were out of a job. You were in Miami every, like, three weeks. Yeah. Cuomo. Oh, you were get- I was getting unemployment, bro. For Enough eight- to go to Miami, though? Bro, bro I was Wait, getting... You're not paying rent during that time? In no, not, not... No, that's correct. Bro, I didn't that's pay rent for, like, 18 months. I was sleeping on couches. 18 months? You- yeah. I wish bro, you knew bro, that. Bro. I wish you might have <laughs> Like, you're literally... Beyond, you're not even living paycheck to paycheck. You're living... You're not living. You're on a couch somewhere, and you're like, yeah, government just gave me 200 bucks. about to go pay the lottery and go to Florida. Like, you're a crackhead. <laughs> Invest that shit, bro. <laughs> you're a crackhead. <laughs> you don't understand. Shmoney is people don't understand his genius. The shit that he's been able to pull off in the last five years, as I know him. I think it people are is, jealous of that. Of that. Most, I'm straight up jealous. Of it you. is some of the most. Are you not jealous? Eighteen months. You I've never rent? been with him. I'm jealous. I've never been with him when at the end of the day he didn't get what he wanted. There was no time. <laughs> if we had to put my man closes deals and closes couches. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> at the end of the day, if we uh, trust me, if we if, if we were going somewhere, he always took it out. Of way. Wait, you know that you, you have you're good also friends. a man that looked up to in the community. I have, I have, have, who I have, I have friends that I, I have friends that have, yeah, you but have I, to but surround I, yourself but with win, people. But it's not a fair win because they got to also have a few dollars. I'm a different meaning. Thing, meaning what? Yeah. <laughs> what Label's saying is I've duped I've duped myself into becoming friends with people who have money. And eight years from now, I'll leave them once I have my own job. No. no like I'm more No, what I'm saying is that, like, let's say someone makes... What he did that's impressive is because he had no job, had no apartment, <laughs> had no nothing. And he was living in Florida and in Cabo and in freaking France. You and guys. Then he a, like, it's what are you doing? When did you live in France? No, I'm he's making a joke. Like, I, like, like, I kind of believe that. He's out was, for a little bit. He like, was chilling hard, like 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 living the yeah. life. Like, and he was having a great time yeah. going out. And I'm like, dude, how much money is in your bank? Yeah, $37. <laughs> you know? This is, by the way, the most successful, like, ladies, if you're watching, mm-hmm. take notes, this is the most successful sugar daddy relationship I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> and you don't even need to get naked. Like, this is really, really good for you, man. Thanks, That's bro. capitalism at its best, man. That's good. And it's an important point for me to get out because I think it is a misunderstood part of me, a majorly misunderstood part. That is people that, should know. That people should know is that I am an extreme goofball. That's what most people see. Most people see the the frat boy, you know, um, just out there, you know, freaking not giving a crap about anything. At the end of the day, when I was younger, that's who I was before anxiety and other stuff really shit hit the fan when I was like 21, 22 years old. And since then, I have a major part of me. That is extremely, extremely introverted and emotionally, you know, developed and in tune. And, and, it, and, it, and it overtakes a lot of my life. Like when I'm writing those posts, I'm not writing them for likes and not writing them for anything of that nature. Like I will put them up at four in the morning for my own for my own sanity for eight hours and take them down. Meaning and I really believe in what I'm saying. And I if you know, like my history with reading psychology books and therapy, like I go to therapy every week. I probably at this point read between 25 and 50 psychology books like bro by like, the way, I'm no upset at you because you gotta pick a lane you can't be classically handsome and in therapy sorry bro okay pick a lane 
I know it, it confuses women also because <laughs> they're like, wait, are you a nice guy or are you a dick? <laughs> a reformed dick. <laughs> no. So, so the truth is, is that you're right. 90% of me is in public. 90% of me is the guy that you've always seen, which is, you know, just goofball, goofy goof. right? And then 10% of me in public is if you see depressed Shmuley in public, he's in the corner, whatever. But at the end of the day, there's a major side of me in, in one-on-one relationships. And if you get to know me, actually the real me, that's not just getting overstimulated by everything around. I'm an extrovert. So when I get stimulated, now that, that extroverted side of me comes out and the extroverted side of me is a total goofball, you know, frat boy. The goofy goober. That's it. So, but if you don't, but if you don't see that side of me, right. And that, and that stimu- one second, and that stimulant's not there, then I have a major introverted emotional side. That's only people get to see either in girls get to see either in intimate relationships or, you know, my free, my real friendships that like, you know, well, you know that I have to them. like take you to bed in order to like get a little. Yeah. Or, 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 or get a little vodka in my system. Give me a little hookah. One-on-one talk at Sababa. <laughs> <laughs> that was a joke between the fact that we did that at Sababa. Did we do it at Sababa? Oh yeah, we well, we had crazy DMs. Right. Sababa. Yeah. Um, and we also helped label with his indoor voice. <laughs> what has, I just want I want the world to know. Yes. Label winner is probably the most fun drunk. Really, and not I just entertaining, fun to be I around. I do not think that's you a good take. Been, no, it is. It depends. It depends how drunk he is. The drunk you were at Sababa was you happened to hit a very, you be. happened to have a very so much fun. very you were at the point where you were you had no control over what you were doing but you didn't hit the point where you were, you were hitting your emotions right so like you right. were you, you were you were, you were in this space where you were like I'm totally out of control but I'm feeling nothing emotionally right now because we well, you know like alcoholics get to that sp- Do space get to that? Do you get like sad like if you hit a certain I'm not judging. I'm, just wondering. I'm wondering right now. I, I I think, listen, my friends, and I trust my friends, they, because when you're drunk, you can't really like have a, uh, an honest opinion on yourself. My friends basically tell me that for the most part, 85%, I'm a bad drunk. Like, they're not interested in dealing with me. Like, for, no, because I, I get aggressive. I get this. I get that. Like, it's just not typically right. not good. Because uh, you have that. There's certain, you have to put me on the perfect dose. It's like, I have Correct. to be on so like Bobby, you're at the perfect dose. six and three quarter shots. And if I'm on seven and a quarter, I'm, it's game That's over. So interesting. I don't right. think I get My friends do tell me that when I'm high, different game. Amazing. He, he, like, really, you're great high. I'll tell you what, because I'll tell you yeah. why labels are great high. Because naturally, right, label will tell you this. He's an intense dude. Naturally, you know, when he's high, he comes back down to, uh, to societal levels of intensity. <laughs> no, I just become a child. No, but, but not playing like a little like with my right. blocks on the sand. No, but but like, honestly, yeah. between me and you, like that's what like when I'm sitting up there with a hookah, you know, and I'm chilling and is watching TikTok, I'm a child. Like that's right. really that's what's going through my brain. What you're not realizing is that when you get high, you really just you just turn into like a like a the amount your brain just start just stops rat racing. Yeah, and sure. you turn into like you just turn into a, a twenty. Normal. You, 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 your worries go away, and yeah, so like you sure. just you just become like this yeah. chilled out. And it's all because it, 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 you have a great personality. It's just that the, I know, sometimes I know, I know. it's just, I know, I know, I know, I know. <laughs> Thank you. You fought too kind. You fought too kind. <laughs> no, it happens to be, uh, the funny part is people call me intense right now. And I think to myself, I'm like, bitch, if you were yeah. around me eight to 10 years ago, <laughs> you're really not that intense. No, no, but no. like, I'm just saying it's funny because like, from the time I met you to where I am now, it's, it's not, by the way, it's not the amount, close. by the way, it's the same thing. The amount of intensity that he is now than he was then, like how much less and like his social skills and his personal space is the same thing I've learned. What you're saying when I was a kid in wits and different things like that, I was not like the nicest person or that, you know, all I cared about, I wasn't, um, I wasn't emotionally outwardly in tune, you yeah. know, like I, like my, my own emotions were just totally like sucked inside. And all I cared about were superficialities is that when label first met me is the greatest story is that, <laughs> I was 20 years old and I had not gone through reeling. I never, I hadn't gone through physiological anxiety in my life that it stopped, that I was realizing that I was actually like, you know, going through stuff and we were moving into our first apartment together. And this is the only one that you're talking about is like, I'm not a mean guy. Like, I'm not going to tell a guy to F off. That was never me. I was never going to like just punch a person or like any of that. Like, 
But Label asked me, we were moving into our apartment, and Label asked me to help him move his stuff in. And I was no, like, no, 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 that's not what happened. Let me clarify the story. He was done moving his stuff in. He went back to his car to go get something. He was like carrying like a bag that had like probably a can of uh, can of uh, corn in it, like nothing. I and was tired. I basically was carrying everything from my trunk. And there was like one like drawer thing. And I asked him, is it pop? Can you just grab that for me as you walk up the steps? And he's like, uh, why would I do that? <laughs> Like, it just it was in the head like, literally like the douchiest I, 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 I was I, I would I had I had just walked up and down the stairs. I was tired. And, poor thing. And I was I would say and I was a 20-year-old kid and and he was like and he asked me and I was like in my brain what what had just gone through was basically like I now have two choices. I can either go to sleep or I can help him and be a really, really kind person. <laughs> and I went it's not a big deal. I'll go to sleep. He'll figure it out. <laughs> Which is just is such there a some sort of award you're supposed to get for putting up with this fellow's ears? Like um, Purple Heart or something? Girls, <laughs> girls should know I'm an extremely nice and kind person. Is, no, I'm is, joking. Is, Nurturally, I, I will say, and truthfully, as I really benefit in my life. But then, and I'm not, I'm it's gone, but it is both ways. Now we're going to get into a love fest. Relax. And get our, <laughs> I knew you were going to come here. I knew you were going to say that. I knew you were going to say that. I knew you were going to say that. But I do have to get props. No, hey. We stand. Fuck it. I love to see healthy male relationships <laughs> in their 20s. Honest to God, no, because honestly, We're this is real talk. Real talk. Real talk on the podcast. The, like, the friendships you have in Yeshiva versus the friendships. I have made some incredible friends since moving to Brooklyn. Right. There is a certain thing about, like, making new friends with usually, like, dudes, like, certain types of dudes. In your, especially dudes coming from the from community and a certain, like, brokenness there, a certain, like, toxicity. Like, even though they're good dudes, like, really good dudes, everyone's so guarded. Like, yeah. New Yorker, 20-something yes. single people, especially dudes, are just guarded. Yes. And girls. It's just, it's just much harder to get to know someone on yeah. the level that when when we met when each other in high school, we were just grade. like, huh, you like Pokemon too? Or just you like <laughs> basketball? Like, what's your favorite? Like, like let's pee on things together. And then you just you become you really mean we close. become adults? <laughs> yeah, but not in a good way. Right. Not in a I way mean, where that, that guardedness, where it's like, I, I struggle to have as close. I know so many people now, but like, I know too many people. Yeah, when you're but, a kid, the vulnerability that you're expressing, you don't even realize the amount of vulnerability you're expressing. You're just expressing the emotion that you need yeah. to get out there to the world. And when you're an adult, you're not just expressing emotion that you want That's to get out to the world. Friends, you're too you really try to keep them around. People yeah. knew from because it's just you, you made them in a different way. really that you feel safe. Right. Those people. Much safer. That's what I it feel, is. I, I, that's you why you're willing to be vulnerable you because you feel safe. How, right. I agree. Bro, yes, I feel safer right now with you guys, and I don't even hang out with you guys that much. I feel really safe right here. <laughs> in this I can tell based on what you said. Horrible, all right on, Republican podcast. I feel <laughs> so. Based on all the. <laughs> I feel Bill Cosby like, talk. I feel safe. Like, I feel safe, man. No, but but seriously, yeah. It could be the nice gray tones of your guys' t-shirts. They're very relaxing. A little color coded situation. You guys started to dress a little similar, by the way. By the way, by the way, someone started. Izzy also, Izzy Gilden said that like I, I started doing my hair like you. <laughs> you know, a lot of couples when they date. I don't so think I, I did. I think that right. I think people don't realize that my hair is just longer than it actually is, and I have to slick it like. You have uh, I mean, I'm just it? saying, you guys are okay, guys, guys. Because we're both, are we both wearing flip flops? No, you're both wearing slides. You're both wearing there's a black there's skinny jeans there's and gray t-shirts, and your hair's got a side part. Zach, Zach, Zach. We have hair. I'm sorry. Zach, the only option, by the way, besides a side part, as a Jewish male. Okay, is to have the douchebag label wiener, nineteen year old slick back. Okay, oh dude, you did used to no, dude. Bring <laughs> that back. Can we, Jamie, bring, bring it the back. Picture. Bring it. Dude, back. You're label. Make, you're gonna make fun of me <laughs> in my most insecure years. Insecure, bro, you gotta, bro you, that that hairstyle, the keeper over the slick back. Bucks. No, it was that. that is, bro, you got you got to look at some old was, Facebook photos. I actually like, was, like a couple weeks ago. I was like, I, you somehow I do. You still don't understand. No, yeah, a couple weeks ago it came up on my feed, and I was know. looking at some old ones. And bro, <laughs> <laughs> I delete them. Bro, you don't know this. I was intimidated to talk to you oh, at that God. age. I oh, thought you were God. way too cool for me. You thought everyone thought a guy that. with that haircut. You don't understand. I was so naive back then. I all I knew was like have a time, guys. I didn't know what Stoltz was. I didn't know what Stoltz you know, was. You walk in with like real hair like that. I knew what like Stoltz was. And but, someone told me you made money. I was like, this guy. I was 17 years old. What money was I making? No one knows. I was knows. a ball player, but I wasn't first making money. First of all, in Yeshiva, when a guy like does like one like cash deal. Like, one, no, like, it's uh, like when you fill up the soda machine. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. She made like, bro, I heard he made $1,000 last month. Like, <laughs> oh, oh, shit. Oh, shit. No. Making schnitzel sandwiches? <laughs> yeah, the whole schnitzel sandwiches. You know how much money they made a year? For like hours and hours and hours and hours. hours. Like I think they made four thousand dollars. 
like a person. Had, That's one wits, of their problems. We had these the, every Tuesday night. It was like schnitzel sandwich night, and literally. They had a monopoly on it. Uh, they I, sold there the there were two guys that made the business. Actually, one of the guys that made the business was Yaakov Base. Okay, they made the business when he was in when he was in base measures. Him and Ellie Felt. They made the business and they sold the rights <laughs> in, in Yeshiva. They sold oh, they the rights. Like an LLC. <laughs> it took out like an LLC. <laughs> okay, in Milwaukee, they, they started having like first of, all, first of all, they had like family nights, <laughs> like families from the up from the west side, like um, fashion sandwiches. They took out an LLC and they made other people buy the business off them when they were leaving. Why can you just start your own? Because LLC? you can't. It's, they had a monopoly on it. It's like eight times like had a monopoly on one time. Like if someone else were to sell schnitzel, the Rebane would get involved and be like, hey, it's not right. <laughs> like, like, that's their Bro, thing. That's not a joke. Stay like, in your lane. Like, unless, it's, 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 it's like, it's like, yeah, oh, it was like you had a, it's like you had a patent on it. Like, wait, is the sushi you're making is the seaweed on the outside or is the rice on the outside? Because well, it's basically like in the drug, I assume in, in like the weed game, the drug game, it's like you have your territory, you know? Why did you just... <laughs> Why did you just do that? <laughs> what do you mean? What did you, I do? You just turned to me and kind of went like, I assume in the like, I assume in the drug game. I, no, I'm proud no, of my choices. That was an insecure moment for you, so I, no, no, I'm stop. proud of my choices. I'll say it on the podcast. No. After I lost my job during COVID, I worked for six months in the drug world and I made no. bat cash. No, I wasn't even going to say that. Hold on. <laughs> but I never sold. No, you're missing it. I wasn't even going to say that. And my mom already knows that, so yeah, that cat's out of the bag. <laughs> Hold on a second. I wasn't even going to say that. I still can go to DSW. No, well, I was going to say, I looked at you because you for sure know that shit. I don't <laughs> much more. Right, there's, I didn't even there's know you did like that territories. You didn't know that? I, I don't, maybe in the back of my head, but not like the, the person I worked for was a year older than me. Started a weed business in his parents' house that he was living in in Deal, New Jersey. He's a multimillionaire. Yeah. 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 I should drive weed around New Jersey. I got caught by the cops twice. And? For, not for the weed. For random shit. Like, I turned into a Dunkin' Donuts without turning on my turn signal. Yeah. I had $5,000 worth of marijuana in the trunk. And the cop was just like, I smell some weed. I'm like, uh, yeah, I have a, a joint or two in the back. Um, I like to smoke on my spare time. They're not uh -huh. allowed to check. They're not, unless They're not they have reason to? to believe that you have intent to sell, they are not allowed to check. I knew the laws going in. I knew that going in. That's why I was able to keep cool. Just like, gang. Yeah. yeah. It's, not, um, it's good business, man. Well, I will say this is this has been a really long podcast. And yeah, I'm, I'm about hitting my. But I'll tell you something. I, I, yeah, I, 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 I can do this all I, night. I, I, I was going to say, <laughs> I can <laughs> roll with this for a long time. Holy really stay. This I, is so great. I, I can totally roll with this for a long time. You um, can do it again. I would love to. But no, Zach. I know there's so many other things. What else are you thinking? I don't know. I can't believe that you thought I was cool. That was like the weirdest thing. Looking back, I feel like whatever. You were, first of all, no, anyone I, I, who leaves Yeshiva when we're that young takes a certain amount of like self possessment and confidence that like none of us possess. Right. We were like, what does that even mean to be like, but it was stemming, outside at, but it was stemming out of such dysfunction. Yeah, but, back. but no one knows that. Know you that. only know it in your head. No right. one actually knows that. You know, this crazy thing is that people can have a conception of us that is completely separate from our conception of ourselves. Yeah, for sure. Sometimes it's disgusting that's like we, and sometimes it's awesome. That's like, uh, that's like anything. I mean, we, what did you say? It's called being cocky effectively. I don't know. It's like, I mean, it's being cocky. No, it's not being cocky. No, the opposite. It You're is. saying that people have a perception of us that we don't. That it's is different, completely different, different from how we, we think of ourselves. ourselves. Right. Like, as in other words, uh, you we could feel like a piece point. of shit. We could feel like a piece of shit to the world and we could play a great game and everyone thinks we're amazing. Why? Or everyone just thinks we're amazing. We don't even realize that they think we're amazing. We probably think they think we're pieces no, of I, shit. No, I realize that everyone else thought it, whatever it was cool. <laughs> no, of course. <laughs> I, I was doing it. Why is that so crazy? If I didn't think other people thought it was cool, I'd just be a regular this person. This used to happen to me a lot in general in life. And uh, I do think this is part of growing up and just part of like being a social person. When I was younger, like not that much younger, like in yeshiva, I'm like in my twenties, yeah. I just used to think people were like very like untouchably cool, and I still like I still like I walk around Bushwick and I'll see like some possibly tall couple in like all vintage clothing and like hats ever. I'm like, oh, they're probably just like, what would we even talk about? Like, there's so much cool in it. Like, people are like not only are they just people, so many people like they're not cool. They're like they kind of suck. They're insecure. Like it's rampant throughout yeah. society. Yeah. yeah. I remember yeah. the first time I hung out at Hevra Avis in, in Crown Heights years ago. I was like, well, these people, like, I will never be cool enough to, like, be in with this group. These right. People, like, who are these? They're just, there's just so many girls here. And everyone's just, like, smoking weed and, like, it's at a show, though. I'm like, who are these cool? Now that I'm like, oh, I don't even go there anymore because I'm like, 
Like, give me like, a cool. Wavelength. It's like dysfunction on the yeah. highest level. No, so I was. Everyone I, had, just I had a different view on, on on gay. Whatever. That's different discussion. But but you were one of those guys. I was like, who is this man? With this <laughs> I still remember glorious house, yes. hair. I still remember how me and Shmuley at twenty three years old on perm landed up at House House yes. US. That's oh my god! Like, house oh, yes. That was perm. a perm. We got to say that there are a few, couple great stories. That was okay, wild. Me and Label ended up at House of Yes. <laughs> that was gonna, because there are some great stories that came out of that House of Yes. First of all. I don't want to say his name, but like, we remember who we saw there? Yeah, sure. Okay. Whatever. It's like, was he doing coke or like, no idea, no idea but it was hilarious. We see this one guy there. He's like, there's one non off guy there. And it was hilarious. That's right. Unbelievable. But basically we walk in there. We're just like a little bit drunk. We weren't even like wrecked, wrecked. We were, we were drunk. And how did we land there? I don't even know. All I remember is two lesbians tried getting right. with me. Yeah. That was hilarious. <laughs> and I didn't know what was, what was doing. I just so, kind of so, gave up the label. Some non-practicing lesbians. No, they wanted just a third. <laughs> and, I, Bro, and I was so, I, but I was, you have to say, I was 23 at the time. I, I, I was, you were wet behind the ears. I didn't, I didn't even know what was going on. Bro, I, I didn't, I, I was so uncomfortable. Like, what are we doing here? Like, I was so uncomfortable. It, it was like being eight and being like in an underground sex party. Like, yeah. it was like, Bro, people were doing that? lines of coke in the bathroom. Like, more, more than that, like, yeah. they, 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 they were, people were literally like, basically naked making out like yeah, middle yeah. Of, wow. i have actually i mean now, now i've been to house yes this is a non-exaggerated number probably close to 35 times like i go oh, all really I go so you're really horny <laughs> no <laughs> it's funny it's, it's, it's really not like a horny it's, I know, it's it was, a great place to what's it like non-perm similar idea oh, so unfortunately sometimes it's like like the NYU kid crowd, like kind of found out about it. It's getting a little bit normy. When, when I first started it's going getting there, what normy? What the fuck normal. is normy? Normal. Normal. I got it, but like, normal. where the? Where, where, I've never heard that term in my life. Okay, whatever. Let him let him go on. Yeah. It's no, just, have you heard that term? There's just like regular, there's just like a lot of just regular dudes and girls there who just like dress normal, kind of just like nice people, just like normal. Oh, well, it the used, worst. I didn't say that the worst. <laughs> I go to plenty of clubs with those people. It just happens to be when you go to house CS, you kind of are looking for an experience where like. You want to see a lot of broken fishnets and like weird fucking shit. You want to see interesting people doing. You're weird like, stuff. I want to see Pierce nipples. You want to see Pierce nipples, and right. like and when I, a guy comes in a polo shirt, it, it <laughs> fucks your shit up. I don't want to see no Ralph Lauren at House of Yes, bro. Leave that J Crew looking ass at. I don't home. need your Chelsea boots here, all right? <laughs> Go to a rooftop, sure. <laughs> dude. The first time I remember the term that came to mind the first time I ever went to House of Yes was like, oh, I'm not in Kansas anymore. Like I was like. This is really not yeshiva. Like a drag queen like opens the door for you. And I knew I was like interested in this world. I knew I was like destined to like get involved in that. But I was just like, I think I had a safer in my backpack. <laughs> I used to learn on the trains on the way to clubs. That's a side story. That is unbelievable. I was, it was, I was learning from Solovechik because I was in my YU phase. And I was like, listen, that's a good hour of time. I don't want to be bit of a tire. Like, I just want to go dancing. But yeah. Amazing. No, house yes is it's. I have seen sex acts happen in that. In that, I'm sure. What's, cra- like, what's the craziest thing you've ever actually seen happen? I saw a guy um, pleasuring a woman with his hand on, like, in the VIP. Eh, okay. Um, You're not going to have, like, action. <laughs> <actually, laughs> not going to say anything here. Um, <laughs> not the short answer. I've also seen hella broom girls, like, broom girls, like, snee a skirt. Like, in House of Yes? I've seen. It's just, first of all, there's Hasidim there every row. Every time you bro, go there, there are Hasidim in strip it. clubs. So yeah, that's true. That's true. <laughs> Anyways, um, Zach, you know, till next time, I think this is. Yeah. We're going to end on a man pleasuring a woman at House Yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I mean, all, it's, this is how we end the night. You have to ask something. I'm, happy, I'm happy this was the last uh, thing because there's no way my parents are listening all the way to the end. Yeah. So, I'm sure. yeah. Uh, but yeah, Doreen will probably have so be listening. Awesome things to say. <laughs> oh, God. Doreen is going to go. Honestly, gonna, Doreen. Mom, mommy, ma, oh, ma, no, ma, like weird. ma, what? <laughs> Doreen, Doreen is for sure gonna call me and like. No, honestly, she. When it comes to this, no. When it comes to this type of stuff, my mother's actually super cool. It's funny, underrated. I'm shocked I didn't get a call from Yitzhak from me like. Well, the, telling me to put an end to this <laughs> after this <laughs> podcast. <laughs> maybe I will. You know, his brother looks a little bit like Pete Davidson without the tattoos. Which one? I'm running. I oh, really. I told no, his wife that, and no, she concurred. No, no way. I, I know how both of them look. Not true. <laughs> Bad take. <laughs> Le- 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 First of all, I, t- I, I will tell you one thing. If that's true and he looks like him, there's other stuff going on. You know what I'm saying? 
Anyways, dudes, um, that was actually hilarious. But yeah, uh, either way, uh, Zach. Guys, thank you so much for. We're gonna do this again. This was. I would love to be a recurring amazing, guest. By the way, I, this is the most fun I've had. You might be. We, I might yeah. actually. The only way this could get better is probably adding Safusha as a fourth person. <laughs> I just yeah, think, he I also just, doesn't give a fuck. I just, yeah, correct. I just think it would get, it would just be crazy. Like, too many, too much. Too many personalities. No, that might be, be hard to. To not cut each other off would just right. be impossible. What do you have we to, could just like get better at that. I, this is my first time doing a long form podcast. And like, I'm just getting used to like the format of not cutting. Not, it's not yeah, a normal. Yeah. It's a normal conversation. That's not. By the way, me and Shmuley, people have like told us. Like, we got a lot, lot of better. We've yeah. gotten way better. In the first podcast, we were like talking over each other. Like, you couldn't listen to it. Yeah. You know? <clears throat> And then you get better and you like, we adapt. Yeah. We're also adults. Probably shouldn't We're in eating. therapy. <laughs> they're, they're just going to pick up on, you know, like awful oh, ASMR. No, my phone, it used to ping water. every single time. Dude, that's the weirdest part of weird. modern society. <laughs> well, no, we should have had a whole bit about that. Though. Oh my what God. What? ASMR. ASMR. ASMR is like sounds that are soothing and like it's a big. It's not always sexual. But no, 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 no. It, ASMR is like sounds, people making sounds into like microphones. By the way, Chewing is it's, like a huge thing. They have millions of followers. Just people eating different foods. Okay, my friend Cyril, she she's like them. she does it. Cyril, I was I was like I don't know, I was depressed one night or something, and I was I was like freaking out in my bed. She's like just she says she sends me this Instagram of this Chinese woman just with two million followers eating just eating food. ASMR. She's like this will soothe you. Did it work? I, I was, I was, I, I was, I was feeling things I had never felt before. <laughs> but I didn't love it. <laughs> what does that mean? She just keeps on eating. Doesn't she, she just get, keep? Doesn't she get full? No, no, they, are... no, 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 bro. You gotta look. You gotta pull it up on a YouTube. Clip. By the way, you know who I want to get on there? Joey Chestnut. As a legend. <laughs> I feel like he's like the lowest think, levels of. You guys could like probably get him. I think I could. Yeah, but it would be amazing. To it would be. I, I don't think this is interesting. Guy. Like, what if he gets on her? He doesn't even want to talk about hot dog eating. He's like, guys, I'm actually a pain. Him and Lisa Ann have mastered hot dog eating. <laughs> All right. Anyway, Zach, dude, Zach, thank you so much for coming on this pod. I'm serious, you're insane. But I, I've never. This is definitely my most enjoyable pod so far. I don't care. Sorry, to all the guests that, that have means come on. I love you all. I have, I have been. I take total credit. I pick amazing childhood friends. You this did. is all about my choices. In that life. was my whole reason to come here. Was I just like I wanted to be the most popular guest. <laughs> well, Zach, how was my barbecue? Very quickly before. Dude, yeah, the chill before it was worth coming to this pod just because like I'm kind of broke right now and like <laughs> pay for dinner. <laughs> No, it's incredible. Now you get it. No, but seriously speaking, great show. Um, <laughs> Sugar Daddy's got. How did you eat, Troy? Dude, this was. I genuinely, I would do this with the cameras off. I want to just come by and eat dinner with you guys. All right, fine.